TNA Wrestling presents the biggest pay-per-view event of the year, Bound for Glory. Tonight, live from the Ocean Center in Daytona Beach, Florida, TNA presents its annual spectacle, its biggest and its most important event of the year. Who will take possession of the TNA World Heavyweight Championship? Mr. Anderson, Jeff Hardy, or Kurt Angle? We'll answer that question tonight on 10, 10, 10 at Bound for Glory. It's Mike today and Taz, and we welcome you to the big one, the event that we anticipate for a full year. It's Bound for Glory, where tonight, the Monster Abyss, in his final match in TNA, faces Rob Van Dam in a Monster's Ball. And let's not forget, Mike, that Abyss promises that tonight they will be revealed, and we, we can't wait for that to happen. Taz for the vacant TNA World Heavyweight Championship. It's Mr. Anderson versus Jeff Hardy versus Kurt Angle in a three-way match where Angle vows that he will leave TNA if he doesn't win the world title. And the cool thing about this championship match is we guarantee, folks, we guarantee you're gonna get a new world heavyweight champion tonight. And we guarantee it because it's no time limit, no count out, and no disqualification. And here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, we open Bound for Glory with the first of four championship matches as the TNA World Tag Team titles are at stake. And we preview our opening championship match with the taglines, because after five years in TNA, Alex Shelley, Chris Saban, finally became World Tag Team Champions for the first time by defeating Beer Money Incorporated. The young challengers fell just short last month in No Surrender, but Max and Jeremy Buck, they left their marks. They injured Alex Shelley's neck with a post-match attack. For Generation Me, it's about entitlement. Not only did they try to also injure Chris Saban's neck, they tried to steal the championship belts. Tonight at Bound for Glory, the Bucks will have to earn the titles, and the guns aren't going down without a fight. The opening contest for Bound for Glory, live on pay-per-view, is scheduled for one fall and is for the TNA World Tag Team Championship. Introducing, first of all, the team of Max and Jeremy Buck, Generation Me. God, does the arrogance just ooze off of these two young athletes or what? And Taz, I know that you love this new attitude, this new harder edge of Generation Me, Max and Jeremy, but, but I think they're taking it a little bit too far. And now, introducing their opponents. They are the TNA World Tag Team Champions. The team of Alex Shelley and Chris Saban, the Motor C Machine Guns. Wow, what an ovation for the World Tag Team Champions, the Guns, man. Incredible response for the Motor City Machine Guns. Saban and Shelley looking to prove to the world that they belong on top of the tag team division. They finally did it. Five years in the making. Motor City Machine Guns representing Detroit, Michigan. They're finally the TNA World Tag Team title holders. They had that incredible series on impact with Beer Money Incorporated. And now it's Generation Me looking to knock the guns off the top. Well, folks, for those of you out there who've never witnessed the Motor City Machine Guns in action, all Generation Me, especially against each other, you're in for something special because these are two of the most exuberant, exciting teams in the world today, bar none. You agree with that, Mike? 100%. We're going to turn them loose tonight, the opening match. At Bound for Glory, referee Brian Hebner displays the championship belts that will go to the winner tonight in Daytona Beach, Florida. Anticipation level, it's at a peak. What a great weekend that it has been here in Daytona Beach. Fan interaction yesterday. So many great TNA fans, Taz, meeting us from all over the world. 
And tonight, it's that big event. This is the one that we've been waiting for. It's finally here. It's bound for glory, and here we go. Yeah, you see right there, all over Alex Shelley. And if you pointed out the next situation with Shelley, not just Shelley, Mike, Saban also. At the hands of Jen Mee, I'm telling you, these two young men, Generation Mee, the challenges, they've been going for blood. The knife edge chops by Shelly. Turn the tide, put the guns in control. But Max Buck Whoa, nice. that... tries to go for the offense. Cut off immediately by Shelly. That... Leg sweep, follow up forearm shot. And that's oh, the... they just pinball him back and forth. Well, that's the key with the, oh, look at that. With the Motor City machine guns, how quick. Quick cover. In rapid fire fashion, they follow up maneuver after maneuver, hence why the guns are the champions. Ooh. Shelly uses his partner Saban's boots as a weapon. Shoots Max Buck into the corner, and now yep, this is what we've seen from the guns. Their rise to the top, the good quick tags, always keeping their yeah, opponents well, at a disadvantage, and now they're cutting off the ring. Well, That's one way to do it also. And I believe Alex Shelly is the legal man because he did tag himself in on Saban's thigh. At least that's what it looked like. But these guys don't stop moving. Yep, that's it. Shelly is the legal man because he did tag himself in. We got a pin. Pin, two. Unique pin attempt by Shelly. Gains a near fall after they took Jeremy Buck down off the ring apron and then totally turned their attention to Max. Yeah, and it was always, you know, in the beginnings of Generation A coming into TNA, there was kind of a mutual respect between the guns and Gen Me. But that kind of went away. And you can see the most of the machine guns. Big time revenge in mind. Oh, yeah, the mutual respect between these two teams completely gone, especially when it came to the injury attempts by Generation Me on the guns. Yeah, they were effective, Mike. Oh, they were. Those double team DDTs that we've seen, initially on Shelly back at No Surrender, but that was after the match was over. Then what they did to Saban recently on Impact, but it looks like Alex Shelly, Chris Saban, well, they are back at as close to 100% well, as they're going to be. Well, I agree, but but I'll tell you what, there's one little one little kink there. I had a little conversation earlier today. Oh, oh God. I'll get into that in a second. Saban, that was about a 30-yard punt. Football Sunday. <laughs> Ooh. Off the inverted atomic drop. Saban follows up. Perfectly placed drop. Oh, man. Oh, man. oh, Shelley exposes the head and face of Max Buck for the Saban drop kick that's right on the money. I told you they were exciting. And they're not done, folks. Here comes the champs. Oh, the double suicide dive. And the champions totally in control in the opening minute. Of show of respect for the Motor City Machine Guns for that awesome offense. As I was saying, Mike, I was trying to say earlier, I had a conversation earlier today with Alex Shelley about saving. And I do know for a fact, watch his cross body, right into the pin, two, no. That Saban had several tests done on his neck, on his neck late this week. I think as, as, of, as, of, as, of, as of early, I should say, as of this past Friday. So, um, we got to see if that, if anything goes down here with Chris Saban in that neck. First, the outside in shoulder block by Shelley. Then he drops the neck of Jeremy Buck across the top steel cable. Whoa, Watch whoa. out for Max. Unbeknownst to referee Brian Hebner trying to get Saban out of the ring. Oh, God. This is what we saw. My this is oh. Oh. The move that, that sideline Alex Shelley, that, that double team DDT. Back at No Surrender, they did it out on the arena floor. Tonight, they drive him down head first. Well, the, right face, into the canvas. face of Jeremy Buck tells the story, man. He smells that blood. He smells the blood for him and his brother. It's like a shark that smells that blood and water, and he's going to go for that gusto, kid. The cocky attitude of Generation Me on display. Open hand slaps from Jeremy Buck to the face of Shelly. He just dared Shelly to answer. Alex did. Look at that. Oh, right in the back of the neck. What a spinning kick. You're right. Again, you saw where it was targeted. Saving him for the save. Yeah, that, that definitely the intentions. How quick did Jeremy Buck think with that jumping high round kick to the back of the neck of Alex Shelly? 
Those bad intentions still on the minds of Generation Me. Look at these guys. Look at this. Sandwich Shelly with the drop kick. Mike, how are you not a fan of Generation Me? These kids are amazing. In terms of their in-ring ability, absolutely a fan. Here's the quick cover, Max Buck for two. So in saw... terms of their attitude, no thank you. Well, it's a winning attitude. It's that it's that positive mental attitude, PMA, as some call it. Yeah, positive mental <laughs> attitude. It's all about entitlement. It's all about us, and it's all about what they can do for themselves, whether it comes to stealing the TNA World Tag Team titles instead of earning them, it doesn't matter to Generation Me. Here's another double team. Oh, God almighty. The challenges might become the new champions here. Well, I don't know, I'll tell you, if I was Jeremy, I might have went for a cover after that. I have to admit, I'm going to agree, I'm gonna, I'm gonna agree with you, especially now that he's he's, he's trying to neutralize Shelly working on the head. Well, that could be the inexperience of Generation Me, and again, to the back of the neck, Max Buck with a high kick. Referee didn't see that either. They're quicker, they're quick in their, uh, in their Tom Fullery, wouldn't you say? Wow, focus of the... The offense what? for the challengers, we've seen it from the yeah. outset. Oh, Once boy. they turned this match whoa, around, whoa, 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 the way they've worked on Shelly and his neck. Tippy top, tippy top rope here, Mike, maybe going. Out going. him off. Oh! <laughs> Max Buck trying to hold <laughs> Shelly to stay on the top to no avail. Jeremy Buck's in trouble. Double foot stomp off the top. And if that's not gonna shatter your rib cage and Tear apart a couple of abdominal muscles. I don't know what will. Gonna hurt the wind aspect for Jeremy Buck as well. Well, well, well here's the deal, man. Shelly's got to get Chris Saban in this match. So close. Max Buck's legal. Saban as well. Look at that high flyer for him. Look at how fast, how quick Chris Saban is. Good God, you hear that thud? Man, it was Hesitation, elbow in the corner. And now gonna tie Max up in the tree of woe. Oh, Shelly's got him lined up, he's got him in his sights. He wants to be shot into him. Oh my God, First, almost knocked his head yeah, off. Baseball slide, oh. and then the hesitation drop kick. Holy crap! How about oh. that angle? Oh, the guns oh. coming at Generation Me from every conceivable angle. God. This is just sick. Oh, we can already tell you there's no place you can find it besides TNA. Nobody has a tag team division like TNA. Nobody has these incredible action-packed matches on. Oh. Yeah, and uh, Max Buck had nobody to tag. Because his brother was licking his wounds on the outside. Saban and Shelly on the same page. Oh, my God. What the hell was that? Saban cover. Here we go. Here's two. Hey. Tip the cap right there to Jeremy Buck making a save right there. Desperation move for Generation Me. It pays off. Stopping the Ooh, guns before wow. they get the three count. Another kick to the head of Shelly. Oh, oh. Saban runs right up the back of his partner. Drop kicks Jeremy Buck to the floor. Here comes Shelly. Oh, with slingshot. Oh, my God. Oh, what a thud that was. Crash and burn on the outside. Oh, my God. On the neck and head again, Mike. Slingshot face jam. Then Jeremy with the double sledge on Alex Shelly outside. Oh, God. Saving planet. He's got him. Two, Two champs. Oh. That was pretty close. Look on the face of Max Buck. Tells the entire story. Well, yeah, right there, Max Buck cannot lose his cool. You gotta keep your composure. This is where inexperience could hurt these guys. They gotta kinda chill here. Again, oh my god. Whoa, the double see. team DDT attempt. Shelly in. Sherman blocks and breaks it up. What a German suplex. Saban rushes Max into the corner. Shelly drills him from outside, from the apron with the kick, the enziguri to the back of the head. Oh my God, this, this pay-per-view just kicked off. This is our first match. This is nuts. Oh! 
as the guns went to set up for double team out of a corner. Jeremy takes down Shelly. Oh, Max snaps the neck of Saban and, and takes him face first right into the canvas, and then Jeremy takes out Shelly on the far side. And what I told you, Saban had some issues with his neck this week, had some testing done, and you can see Generation Me is pinpointing the neck of Chris Saban. Excellent strategy by the challenger. Saban in trouble here. Oh my God, what the oh hell? No. He's got Jeremy it. Jeremy hits, Max pins, Shelly saves. Amazing, tremendous maneuver. Two for the price of one for Alex Shelley. That was impressive. Shelley rolls Saban to the corner so that he can tag. <laughs> Referee Hebner says that's legal. Does that really matter yeah. at this point or what? <laughs> Shelley wants no question about the legality if he gets the pin and the win. From the top, double foot stop again. Yeah, full Nobody roll home. Through, yep. Shelly was all oh, able to fall roll, got caught in the head since then a drop kick. Oh my god. Jeremy gets turned inside out with the Saban clothesline. Then Saban taken out to the arena floor. Bodies flying all over the ocean center. Whoa! Oh, oh Shelly lands on his feet, but then gets taken down immediately by oh, the Max. Oh, my god. Max on top. Here's two. Was that? I think he was pinned, Mike. Come on. Boy, repeatedly, Generation Me on the verge of victory, on the verge of becoming TNA World Tag Team Champions for the very first time. Look at the frustration on the face of Max Buck. They've done everything but beat the guns. Oh, well, Jeremy Buck, what the hell is he going to do now? Look at that. Or 50. Oh, 50 splash. Here comes Max. Wait, here comes Saban! Oh, no way. Don't do it! He did! Holy crap. Good God, a release, release German suplex from the top of the top. you got to be kidding me. That was nuts. That was nuts! Gun set up in the corner. Shelly, going to go high risk. in TNA has backfired. Now, obviously, you didn't know that Eric Bischoff was going to book a match where every TNA knockout was going to be out for themselves, giving Tara the opportunity to be the new TNA Knockouts champion at your expense. Hey, Christy, Bozo the Clown called. He wants his hair dye back, you phony bitch. Whoa. So. Okay, weren't you blonde and last week? Zip I mean it, pig. Okay, as far as my plan backfiring goes, never. 
skank. You see, I've heard all the rumors about Tara turning her back on me in this match tonight. Well, you and everyone else can keep dreaming. Yeah. You see, the difference between Tara and everybody else is that Tara is grateful for what I did for her. And Tara is indebted to me for life. Got it? And one more thing, speaking of skanks. Mickey James, you think you can just walk into TNA and become the new honey of the knockouts division? Well, I've got news for you, honey. There's only one queen bee in TNA, and that's me. Come on, Tara. The situation between Angelina Love, Velvet Sky, Madison Rain, and Tara was quickly spinning out of control. Eric Bischoff saw the need for the knockouts to have some guidance and appointed a new head for the division. They've been running wild here, there, saying what they want out of ordinance, having no one to answer to, but guess what? Finally, they're gonna answer to Miss Tessmarker, Angelina Love. I don't think she uh, really deserves it. I'm gonna put it up for grabs. We're gonna have a four-way match with them at uh, Bound for Glory. I said I was gonna get my revenge when it mattered, and Tara and I, we're gonna get our revenge by any means necessary. In case you forgot, it's on, Madison. bitch, it's on. We brought you in as we our made you. little bitch. Yeah. We you had you doing her. our dirty work, honey. We had you running around getting us water, tying our bootlaces, tying shining our bra straps, shining up this belt, which is mine. What other knockout's gonna come in and kick ass like Who I else did? can come kick ass like Honestly, this? Honestly, you gotta get inside the beautiful people's heads to kind of understand where they're playing. Clear out all that air, and you gotta get in those little heads. And exactly. Neither one's really gonna be a threat. No, you true. beat both their asses. I beat both their true, asses. True, true. Madison, who we made being our gopher, I don't know where the evil, the evil pledgy. Satan seed of uh, Madison came from. Oh, it's definitely got to throw Angelina off her game, knowing now that Tara's my bodyguard. You know, at first it was just my bodyguard, the masked mystery woman who was riding out on the motorcycle with me and, you know, knocking people out when I needed them to. But now, now that she knows it's someone who can get inside her head and knows what she's thinking and knows it a step ahead of before she does it, yeah, of course that's weighing on her mind heavily. It should be. Madison's of her to do just this. jealous because she was never the one on the really spotlight care. like we were. So she felt like she had to go do something crazy by going to hire Dyke on a bike. I thoroughly enjoyed her being gone, but apparently <laughs> evil evil doesn't stay gone long. So no, Tara's no. back. She's back. Well, that was business. You know, I've never been in the ring with someone who's kicked my ass as much as she did. So when I needed backup, I knew exactly where to go. We have a bond. It doesn't matter who comes in our group and who leaves. It's Velvet Sky and it's Angelina Love, and that's the TNA knockout. For all you wanna be beautiful people, girls out there, and you know exactly who I'm talking about. And you're Get not a cool, life. by the way. You're you not cool. You'll never be us. That's it. We're the best. We we're here at TNA just to be number one, right? That's right. That's it. Easy. We are the most dominant two females here in TNA. I knew it all along. She knew it all along. We helped start this division. It's and only we... a matter of time. You mess with the wrong bitches here. This is no joke. It's every knockout for herself as Madison Rain, Velvet Sky, Tara, and Angelina Love slug it out for the TNA Knockouts Championship. Ladies and gentlemen, up next, it's the match that Eric Bischoff booked a four-way for the Knockouts Championship with a special referee. Tonight, every woman for herself. Hardcore Country! The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the TNA Women's Knockout Championship. Introducing first, your special guest referee, Mickey Chetty! We saw Mickey James. She debuted this past Thursday on Live Impact, and that's when Eric Bischoff's secretary, Miss Tessmacher, laid out the bombshell that she was going to be the special referee tonight for this four-way match. Well, it's great having Mickey James right here in TNA added to our awesome knockout roster. The following contest is a four-way TNA knockout title match. Introducing, first of all, making their way to the ring, Madison Rain and Tara. What a unique story this is. Madison Rain originally defeats Tara, sponsor her TNA career.
but then brings her back as the secret mystery motorcycle riding bodyguard. With the giant helmet. With that giant helmet. She lifted the band Thursday for the tag match with the beautiful people name. The beautiful people ring entrance music at stake. As a result, Terry back in the mix. Well, and now it's... Oh, hey, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> it's the four-way match. They came out together. Yeah, but, but this, this is a four-way match. This is not a tag team match. Don't be confused, folks. Thank you. And now, introducing, representing the beautiful people, they are Velvet Sky and the TNA Knockouts Chicken, Angelina Law. That's what kind of confused me a little bit, that you, know, you got Velvet. You know, I think it's like you said, like it's not a tag team match. You got Velvet and Angelina. You can see they're doing their normal beautiful people entrance, which they had a match for this past Thursday on Impact and defeated these two people in the ring, meaning Tower and Madison, but it's not a tag match. If I'm Angelina, I don't want anybody friends with me. I know I gotta wrestle the most defensive match in my life to keep my title. Three challengers, you know they're gonna be coming at every angle. Oh, they're Angelina. gonna be coming. They'll be coming, all right. But the thing is, oh, wait, hold on. The thing whoa, is whoa, this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. The thing is this. We don't think there's a chance that we well, can let them. Can, can we, can we? The Pistons were flopping around and they were pushing it. All I gotta say is let the pigeons loose. That's what I wanted to hear. Oil them up. Slap a little oil on the pigeons. They go flying out of the coop. Unlock the cage. Bam! Wow. Yeah, well, even, hey, even Mickey's kind of impressed. How could you not be? No matter what kind of equipment you have, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> if you got an Indy or an Audi, you're into it. I got you. Thursday, the live impact. Beautiful people regain control of the BP name, the music. This is what they are. They're the originals. Angelina Love, the champ, and Velvet Sky. Think of the new hair on uh, Madison Rain, the, the darker color, the, the brown oh, instead of the blonde. Oh, oh man. Madison Rain, I think well, she kind of looks even more sinister than she usually is. Oh, but sometimes sinister is kind of hot. Cinna hot. Like Cinna Buddy. But different. Oh, man, listen to Madison. Reading the riot act already to, to the referee is Mickey James, and that's what it's all about right there, the knockouts title. And I'll tell you, not for nothing, that knockouts title kind of looks pretty good in, uh, in Mickey's hands. That's a former five times women's champion, my, my man. So yeah, she's been there before, that's for sure. Mickey James, special guest referee tonight for this four way match, as laid out by Eric Bischoff. First pin, first submission, captures the title. It's kind of cool that Mickey James referee all the matches in that outfit. That would work for me. What do you think? Instead of like that giant head Andrew Thomas referee guy, if that is his real name, I digress. So it's a four corners match, four way match. There's no tagging, like as we pointed out. You do not have to beat Angel Angelina to become champion. You, you can get a pin of submission Correct. on anyone and uh, you're the champion. First pin, first submission, captures the title. Doesn't matter who you beat, Angelina puts the gold on the line. And Madison Rain originally was gonna go one on one with Angelina, but decided she'd yeah. like to see Velvet. Well, I'd like to see Velvet and uh, Angelina go one on one also. And get in we, line. We are. Side headlock by the knockouts champion, who I feel Angelina real. Oh, oh schoolgirl, schoolgirl. Oh, schoolgirl. It's like uh, Velvet. So the Lord's full Nelson, maybe going to a snap man. Yeah, she nailed it. I'll take the girl in pink. I like the pink. Leg sweep. Angelina goes for the cover and like several pin attempts. Love the pink. Love it. Oh, double knockout. Well, I should say shoulder. A little flabbergasted. Is that the word? Flabbergasted. Yeah, that too. And now you see. Yeah, Madison, Madison Rain. Yeah, she senses an opening here. She tags in from outside. She got dropped toehold for her uh, aggressiveness. And a little paintbrush as well from Angelina. And Madison charges into the corner. Oh, oh Angelina God. thought she had an answer, Holy but no luck. What a whiplash like motion. Our knockouts champion Skull just rammed into the mat by the former knockout champ, Madison Ring. Oh, look at this. 
Mickey James, Madison Ray, they come nose to nose. Uh, and Madison, Madison showed no respect at all, Mike, for authority in the referee, Mickey James. Madison caught off guard by Angelina. Smart move by the champ who sent off into the ropes, but drives Madison right down to the mat. Gonna wind her up here, and front slam straight down. Nice show of power right there by Angelina. Smart move though by Tara, sensing the potential well, well, for, a, for a pin that could end this exactly. match. I don't think it was so much of Tara trying to prevent. No, it was Madison to keep, to to keep herself keep alive in the match. Direct sure. Mundo. Like I believe Madison tagged in uh, Tara, which I don't. Oh wait, Tara told us she's gonna do this move here. Three, does it a lot. Oh, got her up Hangman style across the back. Well, Hangwoman style maybe. And now using Velvet, the hand. Velvet, Velvet tagged herself in into this match. Right, right into that very large pectoral region of Tara. His chops. Whoa! Look at that head scissor. That'll get you dizzy. That's one move I wouldn't mind Velvet doing it. <laughs> doing it, you know what I'm saying? Quickly goes for the pin on Tara. And again, it's first pin, first submission that will capture the well, right now, championship Right now, Mike, tonight. if you're Angelina, would this drive you nuts that you're not in that ring Absolutely. right now? And as we look up at Angelina on That's the apron, you can see that she was pacing back and forth, trying to get back into the mix here. Kind of a version of an abdominal yeah. stretch or maybe a stretch. Half of that, half maybe octopus, octopus submission hold. Eve, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Octopus. Yeah. Oof. Oh. In tight drop kick by Tara. Gonna try and roll her up, stack her up for the pin for two. You can see the flexibility in uh, Velvet's legs on that cover. That that helped her right there. Velvet, very flexible. You hear Madison? Madison just screaming. Imagine dealing with, I'm telling you, Madison at the you, brought, you brought that up before. I just, I just, you know. Yeah, sure, you wouldn't mind waking up next to him. Could you imagine just screaming at you? No thanks. Make me some bacon! <laughs> <laughs> Quick reversal by Tara. Well, exposed herself there for the kick with the back body drop whoa, to Tara. Whoa. And instead, you might have a new champ here. Off the face plant, here we go. Mickey James down for the count and two. I think Velvet's got to try to go for those covers a little bit quicker. That hesitation hurt him. Wait a minute. Madison with a knee right in the lower back. And, oh, here's Angelina. Oh, oh, Tara wow. was moving referee Mickey James around in the ring so that she couldn't see what was going on. Tara just dropped the knockout champ. Angelina got drilled in the jaw. Boy, they're swinging wild now. Angelina takes down Madison, but then turns right into the Tara boot. And remember, it's every knockout for herself. Impact twisting into that side slam. Yeah, but then gets caught with a drop kick by Velvet Sky, who turns right around and Madison Rain well, there and drives the yeah, knee to the face. And Madison has no knee pads on, so her kneecap drove right to the face of Velvet. Oh! Botox, Botox injection. Yeah. Brutal kick by the champ. Oh! Wow. Madison Rain connects, but then Velvet lines her up. Jumping DDT. Tara follows up behind. Velvet tried to get Madison off the apron. Gonna go Widow's Peak here. Oh, Tara right now in the zone, but oh, she went for it. The Widow's Counter, Peak. Counter by Velvet. Velvet rolls through instead. Contact made. Oh, quick roll up. Oh, she counted out. Tara rolled out of it. She's in the trunks. That's a three count for Mickey James. The winner of the match. And new TNA Knockouts champion of the world. Like, uh, definitely Tara grabbed the trunks. Like, yeah, I think we have a new knockouts champion here. I'm uh -oh. only questioning because I don't know if the referee makes the changes. She's not a normal ref. Sort of tights being held, but I don't think she cares. Oh, we talked about the history between these two. Whoa, oh, wow. Madison pushes the referee, Mickey James, down. It gets right back in Tara's face. Obviously, in Madison's mind, they had a game plan. Oh, right, 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 right. knockout shot from Mickey James. <laughs> wow, just like that, 
Mickey James drops the very envious and jealous Madison Rain, but the big picture, my man, who just crowned a new knockouts champion in Tara. Tara gains the win and bound for glory. She becomes the knockout champ as we send it to Christy Hemming, standing by with Eric Young. Sweet, huh? Where'd you get them done? In King. Did a couple of them. It's, the anger hurt a little bit, but I'm cool with it. Cool. Okay, so Eric Young, mm -hmm. you and Orlando coming up next tonight. I just got to ask you, there's a lot of questions around your relationship with Orlando. It's a little weird. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, I was kind of weird about it at first, too, but you know what? I cracked the code, Christy. Yeah? I know that you know that I know <laughs> that I figured it out. You see, he thinks I'm his dad. I'm like a father figure to him, and who could blame him? So I'm gonna go ahead, take the little fella under my wing, show him what it's like to be a real man. And you know what? I feel terrible for Orlando. Mm. Most of his family, they disowned him because of his alternative lifestyle. But can you believe that? Because of his lifestyle? <laughs> who cares if he's bi? Polar. You know, like... What are you doing? Stay back, devil! Look. Stay back! Show yourself! <laughs> show yourself, you devil! Relax is me. <gasps> Have you forgot we have a match tonight? You almost got an unchecked, bro. That you set up. Yeah, I know, I know. I was just in their change room. Are you ready? Let's go, man. Tonight. Okay, I'm ready. Are, they in, are you in the ring? Are they in the ring? Come on, man. Lick? No, thank you. Okay. Eric Young in Orlando versus Ink Ink coming up next. The following contest is tag team action. Introducing, first of all, the team of Jesse Neal and the Prince of Punk, Shannon Moore. They are Ink Ink. If you're Jesse Neal and Shannon Moore, how do you prepare for a team like Orlando Jordan and Eric Young? Well, they're definitely an odd couple. Oh, uh, uh, EY and OJ. Yeah. But Ink Ink, I mean, I think they probably have more chemistry. They're kind of both usually on the same page more often than Orlando Jordan and Eric Young. It's not the first time they're facing that team anyway that we're about to witness face these guys. That's true. We yeah, saw this past Thursday, Thursday on Impact. Yeah, we sure did. We're going to get that in a minute. Come on now. Don't jump the gun here today. Huh? <laughs> And now, introducing their opponents. They are the team of Eric Young and Orlando Jordan. You thought I was too going? Kind of a little perplexed with Orlando. He's wearing, I mean, he's got dressed in white lace. Well documented, he's probably a virgin. <laughs> oh my God, don't, don't, don't well, it well documented. Oh, oh, come on. God. Oh, he loves lollipops, Eric. What are you gonna do? Maybe not more than Orlando, but I know he likes lollipops. As we talked about it moments ago, we're gonna take everybody back to this past Thursday on Impact when these two teams met. Uh, yeah, well, Orlando and Eric Young ended up getting the victory over Ink Ink last Thursday, but then Eric Young, you see the victory here by Orlando, then Eric Young out of nowhere reverses the decision. And you know, look, obviously Eric Young doesn't have the authority to reverse the decision. That's what that was there. But he did it anyway, so uh, Eric's just a little, took a fall on his head and, uh, you know, recently on a mat, in a match on Explosion, one of our shows uh, here at TNA. What's he got, what's he got there? Is that TNA rule book? There's the rule book. I've been wondering, everybody talks about the rule book. There's a rule book. Showing off his tats to Ink Ink. Yeah, he's got, uh, you know, Eric Young. And, it's just so odd, the guy's just nuts, it's hilarious though. I don't even think, look at Eric, he's in the wrong corner, he's with Ink Ink. He's got the rule books, that all his tattoos, he's got a giraffe on his arm, I saw that earlier. He said the anchor hurt a little bit. Yeah, well, sometimes those sharpies can burn. The unpredictable Orlando Jordan. To start things off with Jit, well, speaking of unpredictable, well, look now. I don't know how we can even call. <laughs> Referees on the apron, and now I guess Eric's gonna ref. <laughs> sure. Look at him. Two count right there. <laughs> yeah. See, that's 
where that kind of, it's kind of weird how Eric and Orlando are effective. J Jesse Neal well, just distracted, yeah. watching this entire and and then, then got, Jesse got blasted in the face by Orlando, which could never be good. No, never. Oh, then Jesse comes back, hits the crossbody into the pin yeah, at the far leg. Gotta watch no. your hand on that cradle, there, Jesse. Things could happen. Pick your pen up, Mike. <laughs> All right, now he can't go for a double team maneuver on a oh, Lando Jordan. They connect. Shannon Moore goes for the pin. Two. Shannon a little higher on his. Oh. Lando Jordan. Safer. Would you say that's safer? Safer. It's a yeah. safer area. You don't want to go into that. No. Bermuda Triangle area. No offense to anybody from Bermuda. Or the triangle. Roll up here. With Eric Young down for two is Shannon Moore right on him. Chance here for Shannon Moore, Jesse Neal to turn things around and try and, well, I don't know if you're going to have any opportunity to be serious with Eric. Side roll there for two. Yeah, but then Eric shows glimpses of, of the tremendous wrestler he is. It's the first right in. <laughs> Got to congratulate him, right? His opponents, the ref, Orlando's just perplexed. Yes. All right, he's going for the high five. The double five. What the hell's this? There you go. That's one way to... <laughs> Well, and your partner in the hard way. You can hear how the crowd loves Eric Young. Oh, now Shannon Moore going to try and turn the offense on Orlando Jordan. Has idea for, for Jesse Neal, who he saw so in the corner. Who officially is the winner of this past match, uh, this past Thursday's match with these two teams? Well, if, if Eric had the authority, he's the one that tried to reverse the... Well, he did reverse it, but he didn't. But then he asked for the rematch. And... Oh, wait a minute. Look at this. Oh! Oh, God. Right in the Yambag region with those Pontiac Trans Am inspired <laughs> tights on Eric Young. Oh, look at this. Now Eric. I'm sorry, Orlando. Wait a minute. Behind? Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, my God. The hill is right across the street, guys. Oh. Shannon Moore, they sense now that they have Orlando. I mean, how do you pe prepare for these two guys? I asked that question earlier and you didn't have an answer. Did don't bring it back question? on me. Oh, did you really ask that? Oh. It just proves I don't listen to you. True. See that? Been saying that for over a year. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I'm not a big fan of that move. Neither is uh, Shannon, Shannon Moore. No. Yeah. Oh, wow. that spine buster. I put aside, you know, all the uh, whacked out Zany, you know, shenanigans by Orlando. He's a very accomplished competitor. Except for those type of covers right there. That's a little disturbing. No offense to anyone who likes those covers. I don't. He gets in the psyche, you know, of his opponent. You know what I mean? He gets in the head. I don't know if it's a head game or... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What's up? I see you got the... Eric showing us the rule book here at ringside. We see he's got I that. I try not to make contact with Eric. Oh, he's weird. He'd be, he'd be the perfect for the newest member of my clique. Here's a quick pin <laughs> here. Orlando on top for two. That's very true. We <laughs> have a, uh, we definitely have a, uh, a very oddity-like clique of wacky friends, including our Spanish announce team, but we'll get into that later, but right there. Oh, look at that, Sunset six, Sunset Flip, I should say, by Shannon. Wait, oh, what the hell? What? <laughs> Eric, Eric kicks his, yeah, his own partner, Orlando George's hand off the ropes as he hooked it. Oh, damn. Wow. Eric Young, oh, lately, not doing any favors for his partner, Orlando Jordan. Hey, let's not put down the Spanish broadcast team. No, no, I'm not. I saw those earlier guys. today you were hanging out with the German broadcast team. Yeah, not a fan of those guys. Translate that. <laughs> anyway, right now, Shannon Moore trying try to make the tag, but look like uh, Eric Young's hand in the rule book to Orlando Jordan. Orlando has something in mind, motioning for Eric to come in. Now what? Right in front of the referee. <laughs> I'm just confused. Man. I don't know what the hell's going on. Oh! 
Jordan gets nailed in the head. And Zagiri kicked by Moore. Eric on the opposite side of the ring so where he's supposed to be stationed. Is a member of Ink right now? That's what I was wondering. Well, Shannon, I think Shannon might get that. That rule book, maybe? We can look that up. I don't know. Look, he just tagged himself in, did Eric Young. And Shannon's confused, as of everybody else. What the hell are you doing? Oh! That's what the hell he's doing, Orlando. White lace is flying through the air, baby. Eric Young in Midnight Rock of Fashion, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Shannon off the top. Pin! Two! Got three! Two rounds for the match. The team of Ink! Ink! What the hell did we just watch? Oh, I don't know what's going on. Eric Young is. Orlando Jordan needs to find a new partner. Got a funny feeling if Orlando sees this, he's not going to want Eric Young being his partner. Just cost him the whole match and beat the daylights out of him. And of course, Eric Young raises the hands of Ink Ink. Well, you got the he celebrates book. with Moore and Neal. Rule book, book of Dillagram, where Dillagram, where that book? Where's that book anymore? I don't know. Well, look at Orlando Jordan back there. He's hotter than a monster in a Godzilla movie. Look at him. Look at his man. Well, look at the book of knowledge here. The TNA rule book. Whoa, whoa. Yep, don't drop the soap. Oh, look at this, Dalando. He's hugging everybody. Whoops, everybody. Wow. Just when you think you've seen it all, we roll out Eric Young and Orlando Jordan to Christy Hemi, standing by with Jeff Hardy. Wow. Coming up later tonight, Kurt Angle, Mr. Anderson, and Jeff Hardy all competing for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. Jeff, what are your thoughts going into your match tonight? Uh, tonight is a new beginning for me. You know, some people go through life always dreaming about what they truly want to do. Tonight, I know what I'm going to do. Somebody's going to suffer from an unfortunate twist of fate, followed up by that swanton bomb, baby. Daytona Beach, we have a date, and it is bound for glory. Yeah! Well, there's a good chance that Jeff Hardy, at the end of the day, could be the World Heavyweight Champion. Got a great opportunity tonight against Anderson and Angle. That is still to come. Now it's time for the third of our four championship bouts. Rematch for a recent edition of Impact. The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the TNA Exhibition Championship of the World. Introducing, first of all, proudly representing his home of the United Kingdom, weighing in at 238 pounds. He is the challenger, Douglas Williams. Douglas Williams, Rick Flair, decided to invoke their contractually obligated return match clause on TNA's biggest event of the year. Can Williams bring the title back to Flair and Fortune tonight? Introducing his opponent from Elizabeth, New Jersey. He is the TNA X Division Champion of the World, Jay Lethal. Oh, the recent run of success for Jay Lethal. Saw him win the X Division title from Douglas Williams. Then recently regained it by beating Amazing Red at a TNA Live event in New Jersey, the home state of Jay Lethal. Yeah, and I know Jay Lethal was extremely proud of winning the exhibition title in Jersey. As you said, his home state. It's a great moment for this young man. He might be living a dream, but by the end of this night, he might be living a nightmare because I, guess, I think Doug Williams got a really good chance to capture that title again right there, the exhibition gold. He's focused, man. Williams is focused. Flair and Scott and Fortune have Williams extremely motivated and they want more gold. They want some gold over there in Fortune's you know, house. They, they, they need more gold. Gold brings power. Flair wants that power. Taz, let's talk strategy for this X Division Championship match. One would anticipate that Williams is going to play to his strengths, that sound, that mat-based offense. 
Yeah, I definitely think that's got to be the game plan for Douglas Williams. That catch is catch can style, and he's a grappler's grappler. He's a wrestler's wrestler. That's what Doug is. And just you got to keep Jay Lethal grounded. He takes a lot of chances, does Lethal. And Williams, being a very cerebral type wrestler, hopefully could have uh, Jay Lethal make a mistake and capitalize on it. At the same time that that Williams is going to stay ground based. You would anticipate that Jay Lethal's gonna try and fly. So it's that low risk ground attack of Williams versus the high risk offensive style of the reigning X Division champion, Jay Lethal. Two on one now, wrist lock right there by, oh, that was by Douglas Williams. Nice deep arm, arm drag, controlling the wing, the arm of Douglas Williams. And, uh, you know, Jay Lethal, he's got some skills on the mat too. Well, he can go, he can wrestle, but I don't know if you want to trade holds with Douglas Williams. I don't think that would be a good strategy. And Douglas Williams has his supporters here in the crowd at the Ocean Center in Daytona Beach, Florida. And we saw an awful lot of people at fan interaction yesterday that made that ooh, the long trip from the UK. Look at that short clothesline by Williams right across the esophagus region of Jay Lethal. Right early goals in this match, the uh, X Division champion now kind of in harm's way. Douglas Williams so proud of his, his new ring gear pointed out to me that his, his new tights, well, he's sporting the Williams family crest on the side of his tights. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's always good to be proud of you. have got a little family crest. You wear it on your tights. I never was into crest. It wasn't my thing. I'm not big in Brooklyn. Anyway, Jay Lethal going for a German stand to switch by Douglas Williams. Maybe going for that rolling chaos. Nobody there, though. Oh, what? Oh, lethal combination by Jay Lethal. And a lot Williams. Of impact there, man. Yeah, Williams, fortunately for him, the momentum of that, that lethal combination move, he goes out to the arena floor. Oh, that whoa, whoa, that prevents not, Lethal from the pin, but he's going to fly like we talked about slingshot cross body. Well, lethal combination. You could kind of see it look like Williams' neck kind of really took a nasty whiplash like motion. So, uh, man, that might have been the opening that Jay Lethal needed. Obviously, this is because Williams is hurt. Yeah, look how slow Williams, the challenger, is to recover. That springboard. Oh, wow. Might have been playing possum right there. Well, they got possums in England. Look at that. Knee drop, quick cover. And for months, Douglas Williams has been so outspoken when it comes to the X Division, how anti-high flyer, high risk wrestler that Douglas Williams has been. He says there's really only one way to prove yourself as a competitor, and that's to show that very well, sound yeah. mat-based game that he employs. Well, that's Douglas Williams. He's the, he's the prototypical European wrestler. He's kind of has that old school style where he believes in that. You know, reason to leave your feet if you don't have to. Wow. And that is effective for Douglas Williams. He might watch grab this, a new watch champion. this off the clothesline. Here we go. See how tight right there. Stacking the shoulders of Lethal was Williams trying to get the win and controlling the man's head right now. That's you can control the man's head, you control his body, and that's a great way to ground a high flyer like a Jay Lethal. No better way to control the head than with that reverse chin lock. Lethal strategy at this point. Get back up, vertical base, back to his feet. Stand toe to toe with Williams and then turn loose the offense. At the same time, Williams yep. is going to try and keep well, him grounded. There's no quit in Jay Lethal. He's going to keep bringing the fight. You know that. Look at what Williams quick to follow up with a knee to the gut. Count it out. Does Lethal. Yeah, but Williams saw him immediately. Cut him with the knee. Cut him off, and then Lethal well, has an answer with a back body yeah, drop. I well, I thought that back body drop, I thought Lethal was kind of going for a Northern Lights suplex. But that's a move you can do when someone grabs a front face lock on you. Jay Lethal trying to get fired up here a little bit and shift this thing into a second gear. Those right overhand rights are bringing it out. Yeah, for Lethal to succeed, that's exactly what he's going to oh, need to do. Wow. You start it off with a move like that and a follow up running clothesline. Oh, and third, the drop kick. Oh. So quick. Move after move after move. The impact, the velocity of these moves. The crispness as he comes springing off the ropes. Right into the crossbody. Pin, two. Whoa. 
Jay Lethal has amazing balance. The springboard, the way he does, how quick he drop kicks from a vertical base, the extension he gets in the middle of his body to explode into his opponent. Well, he don't want Williams behind him because he could definitely do some sort of a throw like that, right there. Right on the back of his head. Yeah, you saw that come. Well, I saw it coming. New That's what I would have done. <laughs> here's one, here's two. That's great strategy, sure. Yeah, Williams did not get the pin, but he definitely, definitely weakened the champion. That was a lot of impact on that German suplex. And he, out of all people, my broadcast partner, he appreciates that move. Well, the reason why there was so much impact was because how high Williams grabbed Lethal around oh. his waist. And that snap suplex there, also shades of another great European wrestler, the Dynamite Kid right there, the way Williams did that uh, snap suplex. But that German suplex, that release, he really, Williams really grabbed Lethal high Right, right up, right around his hips. And the higher you can grab your opponent, the more impact will land on the back of his neck and his spine when you do the throw. And it has been, from that point in time, the challenger totally in control. He has set up for the gut wrench. Lethal fights it off. Go for his own German. Williams connects with the boot. Look at that exploder right there, an exploder suplex. Series of suplexes. Another pin attempt, and oh, so close. Douglas Williams has really been prepared for Jay Lethal. In an attempt to bring the X Division title belt back to Ric Flair and Fortune, Williams has had a perfectly executed game plan. The series of suplexes has the champion in danger. Oh, yeah, right now, Williams. Gonna go rolling, rolling chaos. chaos here. He's gonna nail it, Mike. Good God, he got it. Stack him up. He got it. Two. The champ. Oh. Man, that was close. Wow. Not many kick out of that. Love that move. Love that move. I don't blame Doug Williams for being frustrated. He's hot and he should be. Because that looked like it might have been three. But rather than argue with referee Earl oh, Hebner, yeah, yeah. he should be concentrating on the task at hand, winning the X Division title from Jay Lethal, who's in trouble at this point. Well, you are correct, because that, that delay right there, George Jack with the ref, you know, I mean, Jay Lethal has a little time maybe to recoup, but Jay Lethal does not look too good right now. This is uh, un kind of uncharacteristic of Williams to wait so long in between his transitions of moves. There's this point in the match where you know you kind of have the guy beat and it's for the X Division whoa, whoa, title. Whoa, whoa. Look at this. The hell's he doing here? What's you don't see Williams usually go high risk. Wow! Snaps it up. Oh, gets rolled through. And he got beat. Lethal keeps the ball. We'll win the match. And still, TNA X Division check of the world. Right there, Douglas Williams. I gotta be frank with you, he didn't think too well right there. He kind of went to a different type of style. But a high flying deal there, look at this. Do you think it was because he was frustrated that all the suplexes gave him nothing but near balls? Could be, definitely could be. The, the runner didn't help because excellent counter by Jay Lethal, who return, retains the X Division gold. Excellent matchup, though. I, mean, I really think Doug, Doug had a great opportunity if he was able to nail one or two more of those suplexes to get a victory or hit a submission. Boy, I got it with great. I thought Douglas Williams had such a sound strategy. All the, the combination of suplexes, and this is perfect. This Jay Lethal, yeah, among the people, his opportunity to celebrate. Williams changes up his game plan, goes for the high risk move, and it comes back to haunt him. What's he got a hot dog like this for? Why does he do this? Hot dog. Got a hot dog. It's bound for glory. Yeah, Come on, that. enjoy yourself, Taz. I am enjoying Loose myself. Enough. I'm very loose. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying that, you know, you know, you gotta put it in the guy's face. You want the match? Gotta hang out with the audience here. Why not? Celebrate with the TNA fans. All right. Make me feel like I'm a crab ass out here. I'm just saying that. Really? <laughs> I'm just saying. Well, you, you've never been called that, huh? Like, you got a hot dog. That's, that's quite a stretch. You win the match. Oh, oh, who's the, what the hell? That's, that's, oh, a, that's, that's a sure crew, isn't it? That's Robbie and 
That's Robbie and Cookie, Cookie right? Yeah. Robbie and Ian Cookie. Not Nookie, Cookie. No. Look at the Robbie with those white loafers getting all over Jay Lethal here. And look at it. Cookie holding the extra division title. Wow, I should say Jay Lethal's next division title. Now yeah, we saw the Shore debut this past Thursday. Wow. Oh, well, Robbie G. He's not just some pies out from Jersey, huh? They came out, they introduced yeah. themselves. He can get it done in there. On our live broadcast. He's got some skills, man. He's got the fist pump going. Robbie E. Cookie says do it. <laughs> Robbie showing. He's got some physical skills here. Not one hair out of place either. Pies out when you're looking good. Look at him. A lot of sculpture lotion in that head, you know. Lethal, bro! You're a disgrace to New Jersey, my dude! It's in Jersey already, technically. I'm bleeding it out. True. And I'm gonna add some class to it. Just like Robbie E. And Cookie. Jersey's in the house, bitches! What a nice girl, huh? <laughs> what a nice girl. All you class. love this, don't you? I like it. Robbie oh, E. Talk about, Cookie. Talk about leaving your mark. On the X Division champ, the shore has arrived. Oh, oh, now, oh, up next oh, is RPD oh, oh, Revenge. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. What if I didn't demand a match with the Monster Abyss at Bound for Glory? For glory. I want to return to Fight Abyss to make him suffer, to change the way that people look at him for freaking ever. That's what I want. What if I didn't go through the months of rehabilitation? rehabilitation? Not heard directly from RVD, not really sure of, of his condition. All I know is we wish him the best. The days of darkness are... Some days you're training from feeling at your best, trying to get better, sometimes you're not feeling so good. Yeah, set me back a little bit. What if Abyss didn't send me to the hospital? The hospital. I did what I said I was gonna do. Almost end my career. Then I ripped the flesh off of RVD's ass. What if he didn't put my 20-year legacy in peril? I did what they told me to do. Emotionless. Emotionless. And when they're happy, happy. And when we're happy, Harold. Lifeless. Lifeless. And when we're happy, everybody else <laughs> suffers. suffers. <laughs> what if he didn't leave me in a pool of my own blood? What if I didn't become the TNA World Heavyweight World Heavyweight and Champion? I ripped the flesh off of RVD's ass. What if I didn't debut in TNA Wrestling last March? Last March. What if I never met Abyss? I did what they told me to do. What if they didn't pull the monster strings like a puppet? They have even given me the date of their revelation. And that date is 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. What if, 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 and show Rob Van Dam seeks revenge against the Monster Abyss in the Monster's Ball. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is the No Rules Monster's Ball. Introducing, first of all, making his way to the ring, standing six foot eight, wearing an excess of 350 pounds. He is the Monster of Piss! We all went 
witnessed the disgusting, the unforgivable actions of the Monster Abyss this past Thursday on Impact, taking our TNA president, Dixie. Bringing Janice over by the. Don't like being that close to him, man. Yeah. I'm not kidding. Setting Janice on the broadcast table. We saw what happened with Abyss and, and Dixie Carter to the point where Dixie told Eric Bischoff, I want him fired. This is his last you know, match in TNA. For months, I have prophesized about their arrival. And the date is upon us. It happens once a century. And it will begin now with the destruction of Rob Van Dam. And we'll continue with the takeover as it has arrived. Ten. 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 Well, who is it? Who, who's, who's they? I mean, I, I thought he was going to tell us right there. Introducing his opponents from Battle Creek, Michigan, weighing in at 232 pounds. Certain. There's vengeance on the mind of Rob Van Dam, and it starts whoa, with a series of kicks. Trust me, I have been on the other end of the feet and hands of Van Dam in the match. He will wear your ass out big time, and he's going to do that to the monster bitch right now. <laughs> I'm telling you. And, and, and besides the fact that you said this is it. Abyss is done. After the match, gone. Thanks for coming. He's fine. All Van Dam, right from the outset. And, you know, a lot of people would look at this match and they see 68350 of Abyss against RVD. Oh, well, watch this. Oh! Slingshot. Yeah, quick leg drop there by Van Dam with the, the body of Abyss and especially his head extended outside and past the apron. You know, you look at 68350 Abyss and you think he's got such a, a size edge yeah, no, against not. Van Dam. But Taz, I want you to talk about the lower body of Van Dam well, and dead. the strength that he yeah. has, especially when it comes to his legs and also the flexibility that's oh, incredible. Right there. You're seeing it right well, there, both the flexibility and the leg strength. And most importantly, what Van Dam possesses is explosiveness. He's extremely explosive, extremely dense lower body. Very strong, very powerful. He just dropped the base. He's gonna drop him again. And Van Dam has a violent side to him. Okay, this is a monster's ball match. This is in Abyss's realm. But Van Dam is highly motivated to wear Abyss out. Almost ended the, uh, Van Dam's career did Abyss. Abyss rolls out to the arena floor. He to to avoid Van Dam, but you're right, he had no idea. Well, every, every way, Mike, everywhere that, that Abyss tries to get out of Dodge or get out of harm's way, he can't. Van Dam is one step ahead of him. Well, why didn't Abyss tell us from Vegas? I mean, I, when is he going to do it? It's what we've been waiting He's for for months. 10, 10, 10, I know that's the We're here, it's 10, 10, 10, let's get an answer. Well, that's a board with barbed wire wrapped around it. And that's something you normally find in uh, aisle 10 in Home Depot. Yeah, but this is Monster's Ball. Ooh. Anything, everything goes. Use of weapons and courage. Well, watch out, Rob, watch out. You can see that coming, how quick Abyss saw is opening. How this, seemingly quick that this massive Abyss is. How fast he slid in, got to a vertical base and delivered a running back elbow. Van Dam made the mistake playing to the crowd and came back to cost him. And just like we talked about the, the size of the lower body of Van Dam, the agility and the quickness of the 68350 Abyss, nothing that you would you would normally expect from someone of his size, but we certainly saw it right there 
his ability to quickly come back into the ring and well, turn it around on you don't Mike, You know, Mike, what Abyss does, like, what I'm so impressed with physically from Abyss is, you know, how he covers the ring, not just because of his size, he's, he takes great angles in the ring, but wait a minute. That's it. Van Dam is a, oh, he got himself out of that. A series of elbows. Oh, oh my God, no, 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 no. Look out. God. Teetering right over the barbed wire board. Oh, oh my God. God. Van goes, oh, on. He's wrapped up in this, caught up in a barbed wire. Stuck on his skin. Little rolling thunder. Oh, oh, oh my God! Jesus! Oh man! Look at the pain that Van Dam is in. Come on, Rob! Let's go, Rob! We had just mentioned that Abyss can surprise you with his quickness at times for 6'8", 350, and we just saw it right there. No, but it's not the quickness that brings Abyss to the game. Yeah, it's that the, the power, well, the yeah, size it's, and strength, and now he's going to bring a table yeah. into play. Well, this, again, this whole they, 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 10, 10, 10, they is coming. Whoever they is, they have motivated Abyss to the point that he's just been so dangerous just to be around. We saw the, uh, the, just the horrible actions of Abyss this past Thursday live on Impact with our president of TNA here, Dixie Carter. I've got to tell you, it's an uneasy feeling being this close to Abyss here at Fountain Watch Warrior. out, Rob. Rob's in trouble here. Oh, man. Wow. Rob had no idea. He just got up, started walking, and Abyss met him at the pass, and... You see how dazed he is. He's got a trash can wrapped around his head. It sucks to spend a sunny night like that. Van Dam trying to clear the cobwebs. Meanwhile, Abyss is so trying to separate the guardrail. Nah, at least nah, nah, well, I see what he's doing. doing. Mm -hmm. He's making himself a little table of barbed wire on one end and a regular table on the other end of the ring. Right out here to our right. Covering all his bases as Abyss. He's got a destructive plan in mind. Mocking the crowd is the monster as they chant for Van Dam. Van Dam feeding off the chat. That, the crowd got that adrenaline Ooh, wow. rolling. What an exchange one, of rights was, this yeah, is. That one was on the button and oof. I don't know. I mean, uh, Abyss wasn't doing too well trading punches. Going punch for punch with Van Dam. But Abyss was smart enough to shut Rob down with a needle in the gut. The revenge for Van Dam, the weeks on the sideline, the time in the hospital. He almost, that he almost ended his career. The hundred plus down. stitches. A table out here to the to the left of Abyss. He had Abyss rocket on the apron, and Abyss tries to come back wait, wait, with a right, headbutt. Right, right, Rob, Rob got caught here. Rob might get suplexed through this table. He landed right on the apron. Excellent balance by Van Dam, but I don't think he's goozled here, Mike. Gonna get, oh, what a kick! Talk about the flexibility of Van Dam to get out of that. Close line. A miss teetering. Oh, that table's never gonna hold him. Oh my God! Watch Van Dam, man. He's coming. Head of steam. Head of steam. about him as is abyss he's got to be hurting him this wants that steel chair obviously so Rob. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. what a spin kick chair right into the face of the monster yeah now van dam 
Van Dam might. Oh, I got a funny feeling. I know what Van Dam's got in mind, my man. One of those trademark moves? Is that what you're thinking? I'm gonna go a little coast to coast, I think. <laughs> yeah, buddy. The monster is in grave, grave danger. Bound for glory. Just watch this. This is your oh, 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 wait, 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 Oh, God, God. Oh, God. Talk about how the complexion of a match can change just like that. Van Dam had to get hurt oh bad God. on that. That, that was. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That was bad. Oh we sit here in anticipation of that Van Daminator and then. All of a sudden, he eats the chair and then ends up in the barbed wire board. Let's, let's, take, let's take another look here. Look, look at how Van Dam landed. Ah, good. The referee has a yeah, trying to extricate him from trying the, to cut cut from the barbed wire. The barbed wire, or maybe cut Rob's hair. I don't know. They, they get him out of the barbed wire. Well, that, that's where Van Dam's head landed. Look at that, the wood on that barbed wire board. Yeah. And I believe the chair might have got contorted or bent up a little bit. We, uh, I, did, we can, I stand corrected on that. I was, the chair just open. Van Dam rolled in. As Abyss goes for the, the other board that's laced with the barbed wire. Van Dam's bleeding from somewhere. It looks like the bridge of his you nose. right across the bridge. I'm not sure if he's cut higher on the, on the head or face or not. Van Dam, I don't think I don't think he has any clue where the hell he even is right now. Oh wait, maybe whoa, 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 oh, that was wrong. Able to drop down, take Abyss and shove him right into the corner. I don't think Abyss is done with that board. Oh, I don't think Van Dam's done with it. Oh, oh. he's going across the ring, Mike. With Can Bob Wire in the face Can of Abyss. Can he go coast to coast this time? Ball thought it gave him the the advantage against Van Dam. Yeah, I thought for sure. You know, I, uh, knew, knowing it was a monster's ball, definitely in the comfort zone of Abyss. But Rob Van Dam, he perched himself to that top rope. Is he going to go five star? He might be going five star. He might be going ten star. Oh, nobody's home. Again, Abyss. Quickly rolling out of the way and avoiding the contact of the five-star frog splash from the top. Yeah, I mean, Van Dam, he landed extremely hard. Now look, right here on our table. My girl, my beautiful baby. It's time to go to work again, my dear. Well, it wouldn't be the first time that Van Dam got carved up with Janice, that sick weapon in the hands of the deranged Abyss. Van Dam's got to be having flashbacks. I don't know if Van Dam realized it just yet. I think now Van Dam sees it. Swing and a miss with Janice. Abyss locked with the chair. Got cold car big time. I believe, I think Rob, Mike, is uh, looking at, at Janice, yeah. Why the hell not? Well, the old cliche, the old expression, turnabout's fair play. Would never be more appropriate than oh, right oh, now. God.
impressive physical, extremely smash mouth performance by Rob Van Dam. The whole epic show. He brought some kick ass tonight, buddy. And Abyss, he goes out of TNA, losing in his own top style match. He's gone. Abyss is gone. Remember what our TNA president said this past Thursday on Impact, which he granted Van Dam the opportunity. She said, do it for the TNA fans, do it for me, and do it for yourself. But whatever you do, take care of the monster well, and bound for glory. And Van Dam did that. Congratulations to the former TNA world champion, Rob Van Dam. I'm real happy for Rob, but I have to ask, who in the hell is they? Now a bitch is gone, and we're going to find out who they is. to say that nobody expected Van Dam to use yeah. Janice, and, 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 and he did, and he used the Janice extremely effectively to the abdomen region of a bitch, as you can see, maybe, like you said, bleeding internally. Ten. 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 Get ready. Get ready. Here we come. There is a disease festering in TNA wrestling. For months, the icon Sting has been alluding to a bigger picture, one that reeks of deception. Yeah, no, there there is something going on here, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna talk about it because I've I've been here before. It doesn't do any good. People want to say the dark side was coming out of him. Nash sort of joined in the bandwagon. They saw the emergence, not only of Hogan and Bischoff, you know, coming on board in 2010, but just, you know, all the talent. The landscape was changing in TNA, and being the founder of TNA, it's something that I was very proud of. People have always said, you know, in this business, like, who's the greatest worker? They use the term worker. Workers are the guys that get paid. Nobody's got more money in this business than Hulk Hogan. He is the ultimate worker. Hulk! This is really about you and me, isn't it, Hulk? This started with you and me a long time ago at WCW. Dixie thinks that, you know, bringing in Hulk was somehow, you know, going to save the company. He was going to be our saving grace, and, you know, the guy's a snake. Every war needs a platoon of good soldiers, but the Samoan submission machine, Samoa Joe, is an army unto himself. He thinks he's unbeatable, and at times he is. So going into battle with Joe, they got their work cut out, I guarantee you that. We're coming to win, and that's what it's about at Bound for Glory. As Nash and Sting remain ambiguously outspoken about the great conspiracy, another man has claimed to have seen the light. What is this whole deception thing? Who's what and what is who and why is they they? And then we're going to talk about Pope D'Angelo De Niro who's himself, someone who is from the streets. You cannot play a player, but my friend, you will. Get played. Nash and Steen and Pope are all seeing this big picture, but they don't want to talk about it to anybody. The three of them do have something in common. They're not getting what they want. I've seen it before in this business. I'll see it again. And um, their house of cards will fall. And Hulk, you lace him up one more time, big man. No more games, Hulk! At Bound for Glory, let's show the world what's really going on. You want an answer about Hulk Hogan? You guys come out here and challenge Hulk Hogan? Well, maybe you don't know what the rest of the world knows. That's the eighth surgery he's had since February of 2009. But that doesn't matter to you, does it? But at Bound for Glory, these three tough guys against Jeff Jarrett and Joe. Handicap match. Bound for glory. Now, man up, fellas. Maybe you'll feel better about yourself then. The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is a handicap tag team matchup. Introducing, first of all, they are the team of the Pope, Kevin Nash, and the Icon. Sting! 
deception. All the talk of conspiracy theories yeah. in TNA. It's confusing as hell. It because really it's all talk. Right. You're right. You're There's right. No proof. Well, are we going to get answers tonight? I, I, maybe. Who knows? You're right. It is all talk. And it's all like underlining stuff. And we, don't, we don't know what's going on. We can't answer questions. I'm sure our audience might feel the same way. It's very confusing. It's loaded with subterfuge. And now, introducing their opponents. First of all, from Hendersonville, Tennessee, weighing in at 234 pounds, the king of the mountain, Sherrod. Three on two, handicap match, and bound for glory, king of the mountain, Jeff Jarrett, makes his way to the ring. Jeff knows that he's outnumbered tonight. Well, Eric Bischoff made this a handicap match. I don't really think Eric did Samoa Joe and Jeff Jarrett any favorites, in my opinion. I make it a handicap match, but this man's up for a fight. And now, introducing his tag team partner from the Isle of Samoa, weighing in at 282 pounds, the Samoan submission machine, Samoa. Well, if there was ever a night, Taz, when we wish we had Hulk Hogan here live in Daytona Beach, Florida for Bound for Glory, our biggest event of the year, this is that night. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree with you on that, man. Totally. Want to send out our best wishes to Hulk recovering from the serious back issues. Samoa Joe fighting for the honor of Hulk Hogan. You'll recall that it was Jeff Jarrett who attempted initially to recruit Samoa Joe to his side. But it was Hulk Hogan who finally closed the deal, convincing Samoa Joe, the Samoan submission machine, to align himself with Jeff Jarrett. Now, as we know, I mean, Hulk was supposed to be the other man, the other partner of Jarrett and Joe. But, you know, obviously Hulk can off after the back operations and the pain and anguish that Hogan's in. But I did speak to Samoa Joe earlier today, and more or less, Joe said, I mean, he's fighting for the honor of Hulk Hogan. Joe's a very noble guy. He's, a, he's about pride and respect. Ooh. And that's what Joe's doing, man. He's doing this. He feels he, he wants to do for the, you know, for Hulk Hogan and for his honor. Exchange between the Pope D'Angelo De Niro and Samoa Joe. What goes the way of the Pope, who's able to take the big Samoan down with that flying shoulder block, but Joe right back up to his feet. And when Pope turns around, they come eye to eye. Short rights by Joe. Look at that throw. Nice, nice belly to belly. A version of a belly to belly suplex right over the top by Samoa Joe. Billy caught Pope. Shut them. Follows up in the corner. Piston like right hands. I mean, it's odd that, that uh, the Pope uh, did a line with Sting and Nash, but. They know something that everybody else doesn't know. Come on, Joe. You know, I mean, we've heard Kevin Nash say to Samoa Joe, try to get Joe to join them. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, Ke Kevin Nash, well, let's told Samoa Joe on several occasions, you don't know what you're getting yourself into. I thought that uh, Jeff Jarrett take himself in, but he didn't. He was just kind of motivating Samoa Joe a little bit. Now we go, Joe and Sting. And look at this. Sting immediately turns his attention to Jeff Jarrett. And Joe stopping Sting from pounding on Jarrett on the apron. I don't know if I was Jarrett, I would have gotten that ring after the guy punched me and got all over him, man. How about that? Oh, well, Jeff didn't do that. Watch out, watch out, watch out. Stinger Ooh. splash. Here he comes again, full speed this time. Oh, God, by Joe. Hard, hard. 
version of a Yoranagi right midair. Sting going for that sting of splash. Got counted in an impactful, violent way. A good way to separate somebody's shoulder real quick. Jeff Jarrett, Samoa Joe feeding off the emotions of the crowd here in Daytona Beach as Joe continues the onslaught against Sting. They go out to the floor. That's a headbutt. Well, Sting is, you know, he's not called the icon for nothing. Oh, he's able to cut Joe off, but then just got counted with that reversal. You heard the impact. Now, Nash. Nash drops down off the apron, catches Joe from behind with a cheap shot. And Sting follows up doing more damage. See the Sting getting drilled pillar to post, kind of, well, guardrail to guardrail. You would normally think I mean, once it goes out yeah. to the floor, it's advantage Samoa Joe, Joe I mean, and it was until yeah. Nash illegally well, caught him from behind. And Jeff Jarrett, I guess, not wanting to get disqualified, didn't leave the apron. But right now, Sting with a legal tag right there to his partner. Well, you think back to the history that these two individuals have had. Kevin Nash, Samoa Joe. Nash, the mentor at times to Samoa Joe. Well, as, as I said, I mean, there were moments ago, I mean, that Nash helped Joe. He wanted to help Joe. He was trying to help Joe. And uh, I believe he said something like uh, great and career suicide, a paraphrase. I don't remember exact words, but he tried to get Joe. Smarting him up to something, don't know what it is, but apparently Pope is smartened up. Look at that. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, that was smart. Pope didn't rush into it. He knew he didn't get the right height to drop the elbow the first time, so he got it the second elbow time. Leads to the cover for two. Come on, Joe. Come on, Joe. Come on. Oh, Jared trying to motivate small Joe. Joe's doing all the heavy lifting thus far in this match. Now Pope caught him completely unaware. Drop down, nailed him with the right hand. And Sting and Pope with the double team. Oh, right there. Now get Jared in there, buddy. Yeah, it's the explosiveness. Oh, but Nash, Joe. Joe. Look now, Nash gets in front of Joe. He cuts off Joe from tagging no Jared. No chance to get the tag into Jared, the Excellent. fresh man. Excellence by a true main event or a true pro in Kevin Nash. Excellent and illegal at the same time. Yeah, but it was effective, man. It works. No question about that. Watch out. Oh, God. That's one way to knock down a shot down a redwood. And Samoa Joe really needed to get that boot up high on the seven footer. A little Jared, he is just amped uh, off to get in this match. Jared just dying to get the tag in. Joe on, on hands and knees makes his way to the corner. You just heard Kevin say, I told you. I mean, Joe's fighting for his life. He's out, He's been out here the whole match. Outnumbered to begin with. Who the hell is Jared? What is Jared up to? He's just outnumbered. It's three on one. His partner, Jeff but Jarrett. Why the hell would Jeff do that? I, I have no idea. I have no clue. More unanswered questions, I guess. Look at how pissed off Kevin Nash looks. The look of the stain on his face when he looked at Joe. Gonna try and get Joe up to the jackknife. God. Plants him. Jackknife powerbomb. The winners of the match, the team of the Pope, the icon Sting, and Big Sexy Kevin Nash. Well, I guess you got to give an assist right there to, to, to Jack.
Jeff Jarrett. Jeff didn't do Joe any favors. Jeff didn't do anything in the match, and he just left. I mean, what the hell is Hulk Hogan thinking of? Of the actions of Jeff Jarrett? You know, Joe's got to be furious. We're confused. Hey, you know what? What? Why, Jeff? He, he just fed Samoa Joe to the wolves. Wow. Bound for glory is definitely full of surprises. Yeah, you know Mr. what isn't a freaking surprise? I'd like to take this opportunity to apologize to Kurt Angle, to his family, his friends, his kids. Sorry, Cody. Sorry, Kira. His neighbor down the street, his dog, the postman. I'm going to have to end your boy's career tonight. Kurt, you put yourself in this situation, not me. And everything was going just swimmingly until you decided to punch me in the freaking nuts. Yeah. That shit hurt. Not just the left one, but the right one as well. Both, equally. When you're looking back on everything, Kurt, and you're wondering what happened, just know that I didn't end this because I wanted to. You made me. I had to.
So as of right this very moment, As as of as of this very minute, Team Three D is officially retired. We have one last request. If we're going out, we want to go out with having one more match. And if the most decorated tag team of all time is going to have one more match, we want to wrestle the best tag team in the world today. And if you're the TNA World Tag well, that means you are the best tag team in the world today. So that must mean Motor City Machine Guns, we're talking to you. One more match. One more match. If you beat us, you can write at the top of your resume that you are the team that officially retired Team 3D. But if we beat you, we retire the 24-time World Tag Team Champions. That's it, plain and simple. Thank you very much. Thank you for being on our sides. Thank you for having our backs. Thank you, thank you, and thank you for always screaming at the top of your lungs. accept this challenge. I gotta tell you, putting my friendship aside with, with, with Team 3D, I don't think the guns have anything to gain. They're the champions. What? What, what do you mean they don't have they anything have, to gain? I mean, gain? they have nothing to prove. I mean, they're the World Tag Team Champions. That's my only point. Wait a minute. Motor City Machine Guns, one-time World Tag Team Champions? Right. Team 3D, 23-time World Tag Team Champions. You don't think there's something to prove in terms of a measuring stick? You don't think there's something to prove no. in, in, ter in terms of adding no, something Mike, to your well, resume? That's, that's even more a reason not to compete against guys who have been to the dance and become champion 23 times. You don't want to get these guys win champions on a night off, win championships on a night off, Team 3D. Last thing I'd want to do, if I'm Shelly or Saban, the Motor City Machine Guns, is get in the ring with Team 3D. But who knows? If they'll accept the challenge, I'm sure they will. But, but why wouldn't you want to prove yourself because against the most decorated tag team in the history of the because business? Because you have a better chance, if you're the Guns, to lose your titles. The key is not to lose your championship. Hello, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but at the same time, you're going to go through life always avoiding why, challenges. Why are you arguing with me?
with me about this. I'm not arguing with you. I, I'm, I'm just, just bringing up the point. Take okay. on the best. Prove you're the best. I think it's that, a difference of opinion I think we the have. guns are proved they're the best in the World Tag Team Champions. Done. Ah. All right, anyway, what else we got going on here? Hey, you got me all angry. You know what we got? Up what next. Got? What? Lethal Lockdown. I'm ready. EV2 is a gimmick. It's a, uh, it's a theory. It's a, a gimmick that didn't work. Let's face it, these guys that uh, Ric Flair's assembled, they are the future of the wrestling business. Bound for glory, it's lethal lockdown. A cage full of weapons, something that we accelerate. We are the better men. We are the better athletes. We are the better wrestlers, and that's the bottom line. They want a war, they definitely got one. The Bound for glory, and that steel cage. Mark my words, fortune is going to end this. We're going in to bound for glory to not only beat them, but to make them bleed, to make them wish that they never crossed our path, that they never pissed us off. Inside the steel cage with all those weapons, we're going to kick their asses in their own game. This is the ideal environment for EV2. There's no place to run. There's no place to hide. A key element for us is Mick Foley in our corner to counteract. Ric Flair. These two guys legit don't like each other. What's Mick Foley gonna do to Ric Flair? Foley's a beat up, washed up has been. He's a joke. I can't ensure that Ric Flair won't get involved, but I can ensure that if he does, he'll have company. I just hope that Mick Foley doesn't get hurt. If he messes with me, he'll get hurt. We have been in more legit fights. We've been in riots. We have been through wars. This is a war. We've got the advantage no matter what. I feel bad for all of you because you're all going to leave that cage hurt. It's a sad way to end your career. Why you'd want to get in the ring in a basically a no holes barred, anything goes kind of match. You guys are past your prime. These guys are in their prime. You sign the contract. The match is going to take place at Bound for Glory. I'll be there to see it. You guys will be gone the next day. Fortune, you will have your time. Bound for Glory will not be it. Who will survive the most dangerous match in wrestling today? Fortune battles EV2 in lethal lockdown. Well, it has been a very exciting night here at Bound for Glory, and the cage is dropping as we speak. Things are about to get a whole lot more exciting because Fortune is up next. Yes, can you smell that? Christy Hemmick, can you smell that? Woo, that is excitement in the air. The heart and soul of TNA. That's right, you're just bubbling, aren't you, Johnny? You're dying, all of this male flesh around you. The heart and soul of TNA walks the ramp. Walks to the ring next. A cage match with EV2? Are you kidding me? EV2, you're done. And Mick Foley, you're gonna kiss my ass, and I'm gonna come find you and kiss your ass, baby. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. How about that? It's like this, that little nostalgia act, that stupid extreme antique road show. Oh, Tonight, it's over with. We bury it. 10, 10, 10. <laughs> EV2, you think you're hardcore? Well, Fortune, we're hardcore too. And tonight in the steel cage, we're gonna finish you off at your own game and embarrass you once and for all. EV2, you wanna brag about the ass whippings you can take? Well, congratulations, juniors, because tonight you're gonna have something to brag about for the Ooh, rest no, they of big man, your man. life. <laughs> Tommy Dreamer, I said it's over when I say it's over. And tonight, it's over. We're getting rid of you. Once and for all, you're done. Never, never to return. Thank God. Am I yeah, right? that's right, Ed. Hey, 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 don't be winding us down. We're not through talking. You look at us as long as I tell you to look at us, okay? You feast your eyes on us. All this magnificence, all this manhood, all this flesh, all this fury, all this fire. We are fortune. Woo! 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 It's time for Lethal Lockdown. You'll see the first members of each team battle for five minutes. Wrestlers from Fortune. They will enter alternately with members from EB2 every two minutes until all 10 wrestlers have entered. Once all 10 are entered into the match, top of the cage lowers. Pinfall submissions, they cannot occur until everybody's in and the cage top drops. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is the Lethal Lockdown Steel Cage Match.
Introducing, being a compete to the ring by the hardcore legend, Mick Foley. They are the team of Tommy Dreamer, Rhino, Stevie Richards, Sabu, and Raven. They are EV2. Could we have a more perfect battleground to settle the issues between Ric Flair's fortune and Mick Foley's EV2 than Lethal Lockdown? Uh, I think kind of it's a perfect setting. You gotta keep in mind right here, Fortune does have the man advantage. That could be the biggest part of this match. Where AJ Styles defeated Sabu in a match to gain the man advantage recently on Impact. So that's gonna be a big factor in this match. And now, introducing their opponents, led to the ring by the Nature Boy. The fashion of fortune. It's got every little element you need for success. Ingredients for greatness. From a bona fide Hall of Famer and Rick Flair to the current megastars in this business. I love this group. Whoa, 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 look at this. Flair and Foley. Oh, continuation. Pick it up just where they left off this past Thursday night on Impact in the last man standing match. Well, get right into it real quick here. Like uh, Stevie Richards is starting for EV2 and Kazarian for Fortune. Chaotic situation that you would anticipate when you have these two teams positioned around the ringside area. Well, right in front of us here. Yeah, I'm telling you folks at home, I'm, I'm sure, I don't know if it's translating at home, but I, <laughs> you can sense the tension right, right out here, about six, seven feet from us. Now, as you said, Mike, every two minutes, a different member of, of all the eight teams will come into this cage match. And you pointed out earlier, Fortune will have that man advantage. That two-on-one, that three-on-two, four-on-three, five-on-four edge as a result of Styles' win over Sabu in the ladder match. Oof! Well, like I said, man, that is going to be, in my opinion, a huge, huge advantage for Fortune that they have the man advantage. They're most for both of this match, they're going to be up 2-1. Well, I shouldn't say uh, one man advantage, not 2-1. Starts off 2-1, builds from there, but you're right. They're going to have it for two minutes, and that man advantage is repeated, and that's when you wear down your opponents to the point when finally, once we get wow. our 10 in, then the weapons lower and all hell breaks Ooh. loose. Now, I've had people ask me because of my relationship or my, I should say, my history with the EV2 members. You know, uh, uh, because where we all worked together years ago and, and, and you know, uh, in, in South Philadelphia and, and stuff like that, and the territory there, but you know what? I mean, that was a different time. And I told, I mean, I told members of, I told Rhino, I told Dreamer, don't mess with these, with, with these fortune guys. I just don't think it's a good idea. And I still don't. So, you know what, I, I got my own opinions, you know, just because I work with these guys doesn't mean that, you know, I'm buddies with them, let's be honest. Members of Fortune, Ric Flair's faction, pacing around the ringside, Aries Kazarian unleashes the leg drop. AJ Styles especially, obviously wants to get in as quick as possible. He's, he's screaming how much time's left in this opening five-minute segment. Yeah, well... AJ Styles, Will Dockman, definitely a blue chipper, and uh, Kazarian 
Donned in blue with the rest of the Fortune members. He's definitely a blue chipper also. Stevie's in trouble. Oh, man, gets out of harm's way. High-risk guillotine leg drop off the top, but zero reward for Kazarian. Openings there for Stevie Richards now to turn it around and, and put a little beat down on Kazarian. I'll tell you, Mike, I think on uh, EV2's part, I don't know whose decision it was, either it was Dreamer or Mick Foley to have Stevie stop this thing. Look, Stevie mocking Ric Flair, infuriating the nature boy here, showing no respect for a Hall of Famer, a legend. I think it was a great strategy by EV2 to have Stevie start this thing. I mean, look at the shape. The man's always in great condition from a cardiovascular standpoint. That's who you want to be to start the match for you. It's something that can go this long. Absolutely. That's the key to this initial five-minute segment. You're not only out there for a longer time period than everybody else, it's also that, that five minutes, that opening five is so important. It sets the pace. It sets the tone for lethal lockdown. Well, that's the key. You just hit the nail on the head, my man. It sets the tone. So right now, Stevie's got to try and get his and do what he can to Kazarian. Look at this submission here. And of course, there's no referee inside the cage. The referee's not needed, not required well, until all 10 men are inside well, the what, steel. Which member of Fortune? It looks like AJ, AJ Styles. Ric Flair sends AJ Styles into battle. I anticipated that just watching AJ getting loose out yeah, here. Yeah, he was fired up, man. He could win. He's right sit, right sitting on ready. And this is where the man advantage comes into play. Well, they don't call it phenomenal for nothing, baby. Former TNA World Heavyweight Champion, AJ Styles. He is one of a kind. A flare right up at the cage door, screaming in at Styles and Kazarian. And now this is what the man advantage is all about. This is the two-on-one that, oh, that edge that we're going to be witnessing throughout until all ten men are in the cage. Flair's just a great motivator, Mike. Like him or not, you know, it's, it's like a Newt Rockney type. You know what I mean? You disagree with that, or you're, you're not well, unfortunate. No, you, you do agree. All right. You have to. It's what Ric Flair is all about. Well, they're trying to rip the hair out of that head here. Stevie Richards. For Ric Flair and, and Fortune, they look at this lethal lockdown match as the opportunity to rid oh. TNA of EV2 once and for all. And great chemistry between Kazarian and AJ Styles. We have a look at that throw in honor of Flair right here. Sure figure is. four. Look at that. Well, Kazarian holds the arms of Richard so that he's absolutely defenseless. AJ locks on Flair's patented move. And Richards has the Flair just going nuts. Richards can't even, he can't, he can't get any leverage to try and counter because Kazarian's pulling the shoulders, the arms of Stevie. Torturing the man. Beatdown continues here as they stretch Stevie Richards. Now it's time for EV2. Well, it looks like we don't have a shot of it. Tommy Dreamer's pacing in front of this cage door. Boy, he's sitting on ready, isn't yeah, he? it's Tommy Dreamer. And if anybody wants to get a piece of AJ, it's got to be Tommy Dreamer. Yeah, we got to realize there's someone else behind you named Kazarian. He just had that tunnel vision, went right for AJ, and now Tommy's going to pay. Nope. Instead, comes back, answers double clothesline. Whoa! Sprayed something uh, in the eyes Tommy, of AJ. Tommy's like channeling the great mood of that. What's up with that? <laughs> it was Dreamer who said the words, I quit, last month to AJ Styles. Yeah, which was shocking. I never thought I'd see that, but Tommy had no choice. It was a disturbing deal. AJ almost took out the eye of Tommy Dreamer. Tommy now with a pump handle. And that overhook, look at that. Pump handle suplex, which I think he stole from me, but that's another story. Fired up Stevie Richards. <laughs> that's another story. Tommy has something in mind as he has Richards. Oh, nice. out, and then he drops the elbow. Look at, look at the, the ankle again. Stevie holding. If we can get a shot somehow of Stevie, he can't hardly put any weight on that ankle right there look from that, that figure four leg lock. Short. Snap suplex by Dreamer on the phenomenal one. Now, what's this? Not going to stop Dreamer from using Richards. <laughs> yeah, it's effective. It works. And now, see right here, looks like Tommy got a perched up. 
but it's it's dirty. up Kazarian. I'm trying to think what he had in mind, but look at Stevie. Can Stevie balance with that messed up ankle? Oh my god, look at this. Oh, the boot. The boot of Kazarian inadvertently cracked Tommy across the face, I think. This was that two-minute period when EV2 really needed to turn the match in their favor. Because as the countdown clock shows you, we are just five seconds away from the next entrant. Who's Flair gonna say to the cage? Looks like Bobby like yeah. now, See, now it's man advantage for yeah. Fortune. Three on two. Dreamer and Richards, they did their best. Oh, God. God. Velocity that oh, oh, good Lord. through Dreamer head first right into the side of the steel cage. Yeah, that was nasty. The way this cage is constructed, there's just so little give. Oh no, this is a heavy gauge steel. Those posts with some chain leak. Look at this now. Storm. Oh, oh my God, face the Dreamer. Dreamer is just split open, nasty. And while Rude and Styles, while they hold Dreamer right against the side of the cage, you saw Storm from outside on the floor. He's not even in the match yet. Well, and just... how about Flair? Flair's punching his way through the camera hole. There's a hole in the side of the cage. Why wouldn't he? Why wouldn't he? Great strategy by Ric Flair. There's an opening in the cage where the camera lens goes. Hey, get yourself some. Dirtiest player in the game knows every shortcut. Well, Mick Foley's got to try and get over there and kind of level that playing field. I don't know if Mick realized. She's the blood splattered on the what, camera. He realized what Rick was doing. Look at Foley! I'm looking at Foley! You see Dreamer's blood is. Oh, Come on, Mick! Yeah, well, Raven spitting back at Robert Rude, and Rude just taking it out on, on Dreamer. I don't know if Come Raven on, really Tommy. cares too much about Dreamer. Come on! We well, are on the same team, but you've got to admit that Fortune has used the man advantage here almost to perfection. I, I don't have to admit it, Mike. I've been telling you about We're Fortune. We're witnessing it. I'm telling you. I've been telling you about Fortune. They are just one step ahead of everyone. But right now, in about six seconds, seconds even to a level of playing field. Yeah, it looks like Sabu's in the on-deck circle. Here we go. Sabu throwing some heavy overhand runs. Good style, then Kazarian. They stack him up in the corner. Styles comes out of the corner and gets dropped with the Sabu clothesline. Up here, buddy, Sabu. Sabu just constantly moving around. Flying clothesline. Boy, important if they can get Dreamer back into play here. As simply oh. Sabu doing, doing one hell of a job, though, on his own. Little assist from Stevie Richards. Dreamer back up to his feet. Well, you can see how Sabu such the veteran, how poised he is. He's picking all his spots, hitting his moves. You it's see, a camel clutch. Sure, you see how important it is to get that fresh man in for that quick burst of energy. We've seen it from Sabu. Sabu dropping several members of Fortune impressively. That front power slam by Dreamer who's bleeding a lot. Yeah, Dreamer trying to recover that. You can almost sense it there as he hit the slam that, that the loss of blood may be weakening Tommy Dreamer. Uh, Dreamer was holding like Kazarian in place. But Sabu drove his boot right in the face of Kazarian. And there's just been no sign of respect shown by any member of Fortune from Flair down towards EV2. You know, and, and, and I mean, Tommy Dreamer wanted to put an end to this whole thing. He wanted a truce. He waved the right flag. Tommy stepped to that middle of that ring and was complimentary of every member of Fortune. And then Fortune just beat the living daylights out of him for his kind words. Put him over like a million bucks and then paid the price. And now it looks like James Storm. Again, the advantage goes to Fortune. Yeah, this looks like trouble for EV2. Last 30 seconds or so of the, of the previous pairing, you saw where Ric Flair's group turned it around. And now you add another man to the mix. And 
once all ten men are in this cage, Mike. Tell me what happens with that, that roof, bro. Tell me what happens. Let the audience know. That, that roof that's loaded with weapons oh. as Storm hits the DDT on that's Richards. The roof that's, that's lowered with weapons is going to drop down, come into play, and that's when we turn everybody loose. And it's pinfalls or submissions yeah, at that point and that point only. We got a couple of chairs hanging up there. Look like uh, I don't know, a baseball bat or a kendo stick. Cover for a trash can. Get a little hair on something. But right now, a little beer money stuff here. Mick Foley's got what? Raven and Rhino. Still outside. Ric Flair has his insurance policy, the big seven footer, in the anchor position. Yeah, well, I think both teams have their powerhouses in that anchor position, Mike. As you said, oh! As you said, Matt Morgan. And then, uh, well, I'm uh, so sorry, I see Raven out there and Rhino still, so I got a funny feeling Raven's gonna be next to come in for EV2. I would leave Rhino to be the last man in that anchor role. What do you think? You have an opinion. Now that would be, I think that might be the best strategy, but I'm not sure as I look at Mick Foley. I was watching Mick trying to sense his dreamer goes again face first into the side of the steel. I was trying to sense who he was talking to, who he was going to turn loose, and I guess it's Raven. It's good call. I think it's going to be Rhino and Morgan as double anchor position, and now at least for EV2, scores even for the next two minutes. And Raven was able to stop AJ with a shoulder to the gut. Rescue right there by Fortune. And check out Raven. Oh. Raven. That's that. Oh. Oh. Raven yeah. trying to get the poison out of Fortune. Turns it around in the steel cage and lead the lockdown. Raven looking good here. Got the that new dive job on his face and head. Kind of looks like one of the moon dogs. Got himself a little snot, snot rag going. A little snot rag on a Sunday night. <laughs> Not gonna sell the Moon Dog line. Oh, look at look, Dreamer just stepping right on the Yan Bang region of AJ Styles. Sabu putting the boots to Styles. Raven is really given quite a burst of energy here to EV2. Oh, oh Rude, huh? Look at Rude split up in bed. Payback's a bitch, mother. Head of Rude split wide open. Dreamer firing in shot after shot. You could just sense the hatred between all of these men from these two factions. Deep cut on Tommy Dreamer. Sabu bleeding from the head as well. It's the violence. It's the brutality and the physicality that we all anticipated. Oh, you, you know, Mike, you can hear it, man. You know, we're so close to this cage. You can hear the impact of these guys just drilling each other. Matt Morgan, he is stewing. That big seven footer, he can't wait. Can't wait to get his big frame in this steel cage. And keep in mind, countdown clock moves towards five. This is the final two minute advantage that Ric Flair's fortune will have well, in Lethal Lockdown. Yeah, that's Flair's insurance policy, Matt Morgan. And he's a good one. The blueprint. Bringing it right now. Look at just how massive he is. Yeah, biggest of the competitors in this match. The seven foot insurance policy turns his attention. Whoa, 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 whoa. To Sabu. Oh, oh my God. Sabu's spine. Sabu's done. Sabu split open and just. Just stacked him up, almost power bombed him yeah. right into the side of the cage. Sabu has had a, a series of neck issues throughout his career. Look at that short suplex right there by AJ Styles, that back suplex on Stevie, who's been in this match from the beginning, along with Robert Roode. Dreamer being assaulted with the right and left elbows, and then the big boot drops Richards in his tracks. Standing tall is Fortune. Ric Flair's game plan, his strategy, it's been executed to perfection by his group. They have exploited the man advantage throughout McFoley. He's got the war machine, Rhino. 
to try and even things up. Yeah, one left, one left. Right there, Rhino. War Machine can't wait, can't wait to get him in there. But you gotta be careful, man, because his brethren, the EV2 brethren, is kind of getting their rear ends whipped out here. So it's like Rhino's going in there. He's outnumbered immensely. Five on one, it could be. Look at this. Now Raven's been busted open. Every member, Mike, of EV2, except for Mick Foley and team. Rhino are bleeding. Rhino might be bleeding in about 10 seconds. Well, Rhino's getting ahead of steam, buddy. Here he comes. That's a big, thick bowl right now coming. Coming right at you. Bam! That spine bust out of Robert Roots page. Look at that belly to belly suplex on a very tall Matt Morgan. Tough to do that throw to a big guy. Watch this. There's a goal coming, my man. James Storm gets gored. Gored. Gored by Rhino. And now it begins. All 10 in the cage. The top loaded with weapons. Wait a minute. Tops uh, coming into play, Flair yeah, and Foley, Flair, Flair and Foley. Rick Flair and Foley just... Oh, get that kick! Oh, 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 right here, on, right in front of our announce guest, desk. Rick Flair and Foley just falling shot after shot, beating the living, taking a street fight out of here. Looks like... Stevie Richards, Rhino, trying to get their hands on some of those weapons. He got on the top of the cage. We're going to do our best to follow the action inside. We have Flair and Foley. Flair been busted wide open out here. They're battling on the ramp. Looks like a oh, oh, Raven. Raven. Raven's got looks like an axe handle right in the crotch. Oh, my God, of AJ Styles. That was some sick stuff. Referee now inside the cage because it's pin or submission from this point going forward. But once the weapons come down, you gotta figure, man. We talked about comfort zones. Uh, the monsters ball match with someone like Abyss against Van Dam. Talk about comfort zones with weapons in the EV2 hands. <laughs> Trying to make out what some of the weapons are. I know there's a couple of kendo sticks. Looks like there's a uh, Billy Club up there, or a nightstick, I should say. Billy Club, it's 1920 again with the police. Oh. Rhino using the chair. Can't really make out what Raven's got. I think it's an axe I think it is. Tommy Dreamer taking down one of the steel chairs. Morgan fights back on Richards. Raven using the trash can lid in an exchange with Morgan. Morgan swinging the kendo yeah, stick. Yeah, I, I think I, Morgan's gonna lose that battle. Morgan will lose this battle, I'm telling you. Well, Dreamer's got himself a chair. That's not good for anybody. They dropped it, though. Turned into a fight out here with uh, Raven. And Morgan, Raven went for a double leg, kind of took Morgan down. Continues as all hell is broken loose. Oh, oh God. the Harpin footprint oh, hit by God. Morgan. We we put, hey, man, that's a good way to pop a ligament in your knee. We, we talked earlier about the construction wow. of this cage, and there was absolutely no <laughs> give yeah. as he went to the door. There was no movement in this steel structure. Morgan, I'll tell you what, he might have... He, oh, 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 Jesus. you got to be kidding me. That was freaking nuts. Kazarian just got... Look like got shot out of a freaking cannon, man. Well, that's good strategy if you can lock out Kazarian out of this cage. Well, oh, Rhino, Rhino's Rhino, Rhino. coming outside. Why the hell don't do that? You got him out and close the door, man. Yes. You see, Stevie Richards told him, stay in here. Close the door, you got Fortune out numbered. Now it's Stevie's getting the number. I'm not looking at my monitor, I apologize, got folks. Got the axe handle. Stevie Richards chasing Kazarian around the outside, and Kazarian decides he's gonna scale the side of the well, cage. Of course, there are weapons on top True. of the cage. I saw some tables up there, that one shot. There's a ladder there also. Yeah. 
Yeah, it looks like Kazarian made it to the top really quick. And Stevie Richards is going to move on the a side also. Look at Kazarian. That's, that's high risk. That's danger, man. A ladder on top of a freaking steel cage. Let's stay with this if we can, guys. So something bad is going to happen on the top of that cage. Oh, my God, man. What is Kazarian thinking here? No, no, no. No, no guys. Come on. No, do that. Dangerous, out of control situation. And it, it, look up on top of the cages. Richards now is going to try and put well, a table in position. Action and mayhem going on everywhere. Yeah, that's exactly. Stevie has a, that table set up, and there is a ladder set up. I believe Kazarian, if I remember correctly, set that ladder up. You see Kazarian, oh, oh God, with a low man. blow. You could just sense our live audience. Yeah, I agree, it is awesome. But everyone in this building here, live, our live crowd especially, you can sense it, Mike. Something bad is going to happen. Think of the damage that we've already witnessed. I don't think anybody in this match is ever going to be the same going forward, Taz. Oh, I agree There's with just you. no way. Well, now Kazarian climbing that ladder. No sign of Stevie Richards moving a muscle. Oh, my God. Who the hell? What the hell's that? That's it. Where the hell? That's is that Brian Kendrick? That's Kendrick. Where did he come from? Oh, my God. Where did he come from? He was hiding the... I guess he was up on top of the cage the whole time. We've seen Brian Kendrick over the, the, the course of the past several weeks repeatedly offering his services to EB2. The hell? He's just trying to always... I, I, I guess... Oh, Kendrick! Trying to help... Oh! Backdrop Kazarian right on... Right through the table. And now look at Kendrick. Up there with his Luke Skywalker robe, and he's got some kind of Zen yoga freaky crisscross applesauce thing going on. Oh, oh. Shot by Dreamer with the chair. Takes Styles down just when he was going to go high risk. Oh, look at Dreamer now. He's got AJ right where he wants him. Dreamer driver. He's going Dreamer driver for sure. Oh, right on the steel chair. Back first on the chair. He's done. Dreamer won. God, what a car wreck this was. These men are battered, beaten. There's blood everywhere. and broken bodies, broken weapons. Congratulations to EB2. It was not easy. That was just sick. EB2 victorious and leads the lockdown. Heard a lot is at stake tonight. You could, I mean, if you lose this match, you said that you will retire. Well, Christy, I'm not really in the mood to talk right now. I'm focused on my match. Every time I had to step up in my life since I was a kid, I stepped up. I've always been a champion. And as much as I want the TNA World Heavyweight title, I have to win the TNA World Heavyweight title. Wrestling is my livelihood. This is what I love to do. So yeah, I put that pressure on myself. But I guarantee, I walk out of Daytona Beach, Florida, the TNA World Heavyweight Champion. And Hulk, this one's for you. Ladies and gentlemen, it's up next. Main event at Bound for Glory. It's the three-way match for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. Are we coming?
Mr. Anderson, the Olympic gold medalist Kurt Angle, and the charismatic enigma Jeff Hardy prepare for war in a match to declare a new TNA World Heavyweight Champion. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. It's main event time. The biggest match on our biggest event. It has to be for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. Three challengers about to do battle as we find out who it's going to be that gets the vacant TNA World Heavyweight title. And judging by this past Thursday night's impact, the win by the Olympic gold medalist, Kurt Angle, the $100,000 victory in the Battle Royal, momentum has to be on the side of the Olympic gold medalist. I totally agree, I agree, and momentum is a huge thing, obviously, especially with someone like Kurt Angle, a 13-time world champion. But I'm telling you right now, the cool thing about this is we're guaranteed a champion. And, uh, and that's the cool thing about this. There's going to be no shenanigans, no top fullery. Let's take a look right now at the tail of the tape right now. And you'll see right here that all three men are kind of similar in physical stature. There's not like a gigantic difference. I mean, Hardy's giving up some body weight, but uh, he's the risk taker in this match from a physical standpoint as far as wrestling style. Tail of the tape tells the stories on the numbers and we preview because last month at No Surrender, Anderson pinned the Pope. And at that point, he qualified for tonight's championship match. After Kurt Angle and Jeff Hardy fought to an overtime draw at No Surrender. Then they couldn't settle it on impact. It was made a three-way match where time limits, count outs, disqualifications will have absolutely no bearing. You think of the drive, the determination of Kurt Angle. It led him to proclaim its win or else the Olympic gold medalist puts his career at stake. And, and Taz, it, it's plain and simple. If Kurt Angle does not win the TNA World Heavyweight Championship tonight at Bound for Glory, he vows, he promises that he leaves TNA. It's a great chance that happened. It's a great chance that happened. I mean, it could definitely happen. I mean, who do you pick here? Let's pick him, Tom. No, no, don't give me no gray area. Pick no. somebody. Well, I'm just going to say what Kurt Angle has at stake here, that drive, that determination, the momentum coming off the victory in the $100,000 Battle Royal this past Thursday on Impact, I'm going to go with Kurt Angle to yep. leave Bound for Glory as the champ. I'm going to go with the guy I, I, I think might win this thing here, and I'm going to go with Jeff Hardy. Okay. I think I, I really am. I think Jeff Hardy, I think he's kind of playing his cards right close to his vest. I think Jeff, with his dark side and his crazy make care, devil make care attitude, I think that Jeff Hardy might do this thing. But then again, you could always have Anderson win this thing. You know, when it comes to Mr. Anderson. But it could I, be Kurt Tudor. That's true. When I thought you'd have to be on the fence. I'm all over the place. Yeah. When it comes to Anderson, you have to wonder. High profile championship matches. Right off the bat, you've got to give the edge to Angle oh, and Hardy. But this is the opportunity for Mr. Anderson to prove himself, to prove that he belongs right next to Hardy and Angle. The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is your main event of the evening for the vacant TNA Heavyweight Championship of the World. Introducing, first of all, his challenger number one from Cameron, North Carolina. He is the charismatic enigma, Jeff Hardy.
Very cool shot right there, right? Ladies and gentlemen, and of course, my assholes. From Green Bay, Wisconsin, Mr. Anderson. to be mentioned alongside the Jeff Hardys, alongside the Kurt Angles. This is the chance for Mr. Anderson to prove himself because on our biggest event of the year, it's time for our biggest match, the main event, TNA World Heavyweight title. That's the possibility Mr. Anderson looks to become world champ for the first time. And now, Ladies and gentlemen, introducing competitor number three. He comes to us from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Weighing in at 240 pounds, he is professional wrestling's only Olympic gold medalist, determination that Kurt Angle does in professional wrestling. Who else would put their career at stake telling the world that it's win or else? Either become TNA World Heavyweight Champion tonight or leave the TNA organization. And we heard pre-match comments from Kurt sending out the best wishes to Hulk Hogan and telling Hogan that he was gonna do it for Hulk tonight. Well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, Hulk Hogan now uh, is kind of a uh, champion, kind of endorsing Kurt Angle, as we've seen recently on Impact. I mean, there's a lot in common, I guess, Hulk sees an angle. The Americana, a champion, being a household name. You know, where we've seen Eric Bischoff kind of do the same type of thing with, with Mr. Anderson. She's a lot of Anderson himself, brash, cocky, controversial. So, you know, see what happens, man. It's all about right now being the world heavyweight champion. Which one of these three men, by the end of tonight, will be crowned new TNA champion? Again, first man to score a pinfall or submission wins the title. And TNA management has opened this match up, claiming no time limits, no count outs, no disqualifications, especially after what went down between Jeff Hardy and Kurt Angle. Where we well, this, is, this is every man for himself for a short while there. Kurt and Jeff Hardy were working as a cohesive unit to kind of wear down uh, Mr. Anderson. And with Angle taken out of play in the early going, this is the chance for, for Hardy or Anderson to shine, and right now it's, it's Hardy in the driver's seat. Yeah, well, I mean, Kurt Angle helped. Hardy, you know, wears down wow. Mr. Anderson, but Anderson. Nice reversal on the neck breaker. Anderson, this. quick cover. Angle comes in. Smart well, move by Kurt. Boy, he had to make hey, that save. Think Kurt, of what's at stake, Kurt. Well, exactly. If Kurt doesn't do that, Kurt's gone. Not only that, Mr. Anderson becomes a new world champion. You see Kurt look like right there. He's going after a knee, going after one of the limbs, the wheels of Mr. Anderson. I don't know if Kurt will stay on that, but he took a couple of shots at the front of the kneecap, the patella area of Mr. Anderson's legs. And you know, when you watch Kurt Angle, he'll work on that, the lower body of his opponents, all in anticipation wow. of going for the famous ankle lock whoa, whoa, submission. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Speaking of famous moves by Kurt Angle, suplex, belly to belly. Here we go, here we go, Hardy let's go, right here, go. Cover Hardy in for the save. Very explosive belly to belly suplex by the 13-time world champion, Kurt Angle. And Jeff Hardy, a lot of power in those punches. Anderson, look at him, he's down, still hurting. 
think of the potential that we have here tonight, the possibility that, that two TNA careers will come to an end. We witnessed the final match of the Monster Abyss earlier, and now either Kurt Angle wins the world title or he says goodbye to TNA and, you know, forever. And we talked, you know, you talked about that. I mean, Kurt, I think that's a combination of being confident and also Kurt trying to motivate himself by putting that chapel in this. What the hell? Wow. <laughs> that was cool. Incredible. This German suplex two guys, man. Is that, is, that that, is that that grip strength you always talk about? Wait a minute, cover for Kurt on oh, Anderson. Well, absolutely. Kurt has a phenomenal, excellent finger strength, wrist strength, the power in his grip, which is so vital when performing a suplex. And Kurt now with a cover. Try and cover Hardy. See, it really all started with his years of, of training as well, an as, amateur wrestler. Yeah, as a youth wrestler, I would assume, even before he, after, you know, as a collegiate wrestler, and into his amateur career in the Olympics and whatnot. I mean, that starts as a young age, as a young wrestler, as a youth wrestler, working on your grip strength, your finger and wrist strength. It's vital. Wow, oh my, oh my God, that's bad. Oh, jeez, man, Kurt landed really bad here. The explosive move by Angle, but instead Hardy sends him out to the floor. Wow. Yeah, Kurt, Kurt really splatted out here bad. Angle tries to recover while Anderson slides in. Well, Mr. And Anderson, I'm sorry, man, but he took advantage of the opportunity. That's it, just where I was headed. Hey, man. There's that opening there, and it's what you've got to do. TNA World Heavyweight title at stake. Anderson dropping the elbows on the chest. Looks like Anderson's got some blood off the top of his head. Look at Kurt. Able to stop Anderson's momentum here. Pulls Anderson out in the two battle outside. Remember, no count out, no disqualifications. Oh, look at Jeff. Watch out, Hardy, look at Hardy, Hardy. That was sick. Look at the big heel over there, Mike. Hardy goes high risk. Right takes over out, the top. It takes out Anderson and Angle, but the, the landing of Jeff Hardy here. It's one of those moves that, that really could come back to affect him as much as the other two guys. Well, I saw Anderson grabbing at his knee again, the same knee that Kurt attacked earlier. But Hardy did land hard, but he just took out both Angle and Anderson. Now, if, if, if Jeff can get a pin or a submission here, but Kurt's up. Yeah, right to the knee. Look at that. On Jeff's knee now. That's how Kurt chops down his opponent. You chop him down from the base, right? That's your base, your legs, and now control the head. Little snap suplex. And then the cover. Systematically dissects the human body. That's what Kurt Angle does. He gets himself a rear choke or a rear chin lock. No wasted motion no, from well, Angle yeah. in the least. Even on the pin attempt, you saw where he had the forearm. Quickness. Yeah. Also so, right there. Right across, and succinctly he does it. And look at how Kurt keeps all his upper body weight on the back of the head of, of Jeff Hardy, making it hard for Jeff to breathe. Hardy gonna try and get things rolling. Starts off with the running clothesline. Drops oh, yeah. angle again. That's what Hardy wants to do, Mike. Stay off the mat with Kurt Angle. Don't stay on the mat with him, man. He will just wind you up, stretch you out like a pretzel. Ah! But this is where Jeff, he's in his zone now. Oh, wait a minute. Jeff got caught, buddy. Oh, boy. Recovery by Angle. What a throw by Kurt. Well, look at Anderson. Anderson slides through. Oof. Three leg of Hardy. Right on target. Caught Anderson flush. So did both boots in the corner for Kurt. Jeff Hardy. He is just rolling right now. Cooking on all cylinders, looking good. He's got Angle and Anderson both down. Senses that he can go high risk. It didn't pay off moments ago. Over the top of, of Angle. Look at Kurt, it looked like he missed the... Missed Angle's the, gonna try and get it. Get it. Gets two. Well, Kurt shot himself out of that corner. Anderson moves. It looked like the swanton, right? Jeff missed the swanton. And there's our president, Dixie Carter of TNA, looking on to see who our new champion is going to be here at TNA. Nothing more important than this, ladies and gentlemen. We determine who owns that vacant TNA World Heavyweight title. Tonight, once and for all, we guaranteed it earlier, Taz. It's going to take place. Yeah, I, I believe Kurt might have a gash, I believe, over his right eye, Mike. Going to try and suplex Hardy back in. Hardy holding on. 
Yeah, it's tough to stop Kurt from doing a throw, but well, watch Anderson. Look at Anderson. Anderson going to slide in underneath. He'll do like a power bomb, and there's going to be a suplex. Wow. Du doubly effective move by Anderson, hurting both angles. And the get it. on top of Anderson. Oh, Anderson. No. Yeah, I think uh, I was going to say, go cover him. Right on top now of Hardy. Yeah, because I think Jeff got the worst of that power bomb into the, the superplex. Now Anderson seems to have that cocky, brash look on his face here. Don't get too cocky, see, now he got caught sick. Now he got stuck with a German suplex right on the back of your head. Grip strength that we talked about oh, you're earlier. So Anderson trying to break, look, he's elbowing the, the forearm. Good luck. Of Kurt, yeah. Watch, two, watch Kurt's hips, Mike. Two, two suplexes. There he pops those hips. Incredible close from this angle. He's going to get a side angle. Yeah. He kind of bridges back. He lowers his hips under his opponent's hips, which creates that torque in the throw. Maintaining that grip. Bam! Sticks him again. For Hardy. You know, some high impact German suplexes will wear out any man. Especially delivered by a 13 time world champion, here Olympic gold medalist. Here it is, ankle lock. Going for the other one here. Wow. Submission hold applied. He might get, I mean, you know, Jeff might tap here. Referee Brian Hebner checking to see if Hardy's going to submit. Oh, Quickly what? turns his attention yep. to Anderson, who charged in. Nice what? ankle pick. Hey, what he's going to he, he's going to try and hook both Hardy and Anderson's legs together. I've never seen this. Double this. ankle lock submission applied by Kurt Angle. Kurt's going to become a new champ by breaking both guys' ankles. He only needs one to tap. I think he wants both. He don't want any shortcuts. But the beauty of this is he can get one to tap and he can control the other. He doesn't have to worry about somebody yeah, yeah, sneaking yeah. up from behind on him. Yeah, but can Kurt get the same, uh, you know, I was going to say the same effectiveness on two as he would with one? That's and the question. At the same time, you have two men, not one, trying to, break, trying to break that ankle lock. You know, both of these men are holding their, their ankles. Hardy and Anderson, and now Kurt. Kind of going to wow. where, you know, you don't see Kurt go off, and that's to the top row. And Anderson is there to cut Angle off before he can get all the way to the top. Kurt's using more of a ground-based wrestler, but Anderson, oh my God, Anderson's in a great position to dump Kurt right here. Oh, Kurt's in big-time danger, Mike. He's going for a ride. All the cervical spine problems and neck problems that Kurt has had. Uh, oh, Anderson drapes the arm. Yeah, but look at Hardy. Oh, he's oh, oh, right on the back of Anderson. Oh, my God, that was sick. That's a desperation move. Kurt's Kurt done. Kurt's done. Hardy on top. Oh, he's got both covered. I didn't realize that. What a match for the TNA World Champion. Who will be crowned a new champion? No count outs, no disqualification, no time limit. And the importance of this match is something that we are seeing right before our very eyes here as all three men just battling for the TNA World Heavyweight title. Everybody putting it all on the line. Is he gonna go for the twist? He tried it. Instead, Angle shoots him off into Anderson and hits the Angle slam. Here we go, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Everything got a three count. God, that was close. Yeah. Angle slam. Mike, that was like a second. That was like one second of a split second away from Kurt Angle becoming world champion again. You've got to give a lot of credit to Jeff Hardy, able to kick out of that such so quickly. And now Anderson, Anderson now, yeah, up in no man's land and gets cut off by Kurt. Much like we saw earlier. Oh, angle where, slam here, Mike. Anderson angle slam. Caught angle up there. Kurt's going to try and turn it around yeah, on Anderson. Anderson's blocking. Oh, my God. Top rope. Wow. Kurt Angle just crotched Anderson. And Can he dump oh, it? Kurt is going to try and steal no, it. Oh, God. Near fall after Ooh. near fall. Talk about digging down deep. Mr. Anderson amazingly avoids the three count. How important is the TNA World Championship? All three of these men wearing each other out right here live. Hardy catches Angle. Yeah! Gonna go whisper in the wind off the top. Anderson turns around, gets a move. And then gets caught with the twist of fate. A twist of fate that was effective. 
Could be Swanton time. Yeah, we're about to crown a new champion here, buddy. Here we go. Holy Swanton on Anderson. Here's one. Here's two. Ankle, 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 ankle. Not only pulls him off the pin, but in the process, angle applies the ankle lock submission. Good angle. Get... He's, he's, gonna, he's, he's gonna snap that ankle if Jeff Hardy don't tap. Gonna try and get Hardy to tap. Hardy trying to position whoa, 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 his free legs to kick away. But yeah, he's coming up just short. To try Kurt's, to turn. Kurt's got his body lean back, staying Jeff's, just. Jeff's trying to turn Mike like that to, to get the power no. off the, the whole oh. Mike check. Anderson on top. Anderson won. Anderson two. Anderson did it. Oh, did he oh. get it? Did he get oh my it? God, no, he didn't. God, that was a hair. But you away. couldn't be any closer. No, you could not. Oh man, he almost did it. How frustrating is that for Anderson? Anderson senses he's got angle sufficiently weakened. And Kurt rolls through, got the momentum. Instead, stacks him, Anderson stack. stacks him up. Hardy side roll. Hardy on ropes, top of ropes, Anderson. Ropes. Very smart by, by Anderson to be near those ropes. Double clothesline. All three men are down. Kurt, can, the only one showing some life. Yeah, can Kurt recover here and take advantage of that double clothesline? He's going to go to the top again. There it is. Angle moves off. This should do it. Here we go. One, two. God, I thought that was it, Mike. Oh, my God. Wow. Well, uh, Hardy cannot be counted out. There is no count at this. No disqualification, as we said. No time limit. We're going to settle this once and for all tonight at Bound for Glory. There goes Anderson. Able to put the shoulder into Kurt. Uh, uh -oh. Leapfrog got caught. Kurt got caught the leapfrog. The counter. Oh, Angle Kurt's got an answer. So, no. does, so does Anderson. Mic check, mic check, buddy. He's got the mic check lined up, but counted out by Kurt. Not going to get it. Block the stand. Trying to do a stand to switch, but block that. Probably a attempt for a German. What a familiarity of both men come into play. They've got the perfect answer, the perfect counter. Oh, oh no. God almighty. Brian Hebden, the referee, got he just got freaking destroyed inadvertently. That was Kurt didn't mean to do that. Anderson ducked quick. He was just in the line of fire. Oh, he sure as hell was, man. That ref just got lit up with that clothesline. You saw Kurt's face. He was shocked what happened. Angle caught one suplex. Anderson. We need another referee out here or something. It's no disqualification, as we said. And now no I'll count out. Yeah. But we need, some, we need somebody oh, to lay man down. down. Wait, now what? What? Oh, fish off the, the chair? Okay. I quite get what's going either. down here. Bischoff coming in with a steel chair? What? No. What? He's not here. You saw Hogan shaking his head. No, it's not going to go down this way. Eric Bischoff's true colors are about to finally come out. And Hogan, fresh off back surgery, is here. And we know Hogan was, was, was there championing the cause of Kurt Angle, backing Kurt Angle. Match is still going on, isn't it? The referee is down. And... How the hell is Hogan even able to, to get on the apron and being assisted? I just feel the pain the man is in. The ring. What, what Bischoff do? Bischoff just took the steel chair and tossed it out to the floor. He's wiping his hands. Yeah, well, the, the, yeah. Yeah. a little too late for that. Look at, look at Bishop.
Bischoff come up with excuses for Hogan. Hogan and Bischoff, they square off. Jeff Hardy trying to play peacemaker here. Trying to separate the two. Just daring, daring Bischoff to hit him with the clutch. Kirk made his way to his feet. Oh! oh my God. What the? What the? What the? Something. What the hell is going on here? And a big 